I was living in a mobile home and I made a Google ad. I went from zero dollars, took me about six months and I was making $8,000 a month. Changed my life. I never looked back. I did a live stream in 2012 and I told people I've been doing online business for 10 years. I'll teach you what I know. And I had a hundred people on the live stream and I made a thousand dollars. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. <laughs> What's your favorite book and why? When I saw your stuff, I was like, yeah, usually these things are scam, but this guy is very smart. <laughs> He's right on a lot of things. Well, I've been the most Google person in the world for like a month. All the money I've made, it's not worth the stress that I went through. Men on the moon. You believe it's not true? Um, uh, uh, it's probably AI by 2026 in two years, they say it'll be 800 times more powerful. Crypto's good, but if there's ever a nuclear strike and the power grid goes out, crypto ain't worth nothing. Are we on? We are on. Okay. Thank you for coming, Ty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd like to start with a, a small story. Okay. Uh, when I was 14, Okay. I stumbled into uh, a video on YouTube. That was you talking at your place with a bunch of other people. Okay. Found the video, maybe a few thousand views. Really liked what you were saying. Watched all of the videos on your channel. At the time, I think you had definitely less than 100,000 okay. subscribers. You hadn't made any ads yet. Oh, really? Hadn't launched the 67 Steps group. So that's like 2013, 2014. Yep. You launched the 67 Steps. Yeah. I bought it. Oh, really? You're an original. Yes. That's <laughs> what uh, started my journey into self-help. Okay. Really changed my views on a lot of things. I have back home on my computer, I have like a summary of uh, maybe 20 pages out of all the videos of the 67 Steps. For two months, I watched every single day one video. I would make you the did summary. The thing. Okay. Yes. Then uh, I applied all of this. A few years later, you started selling uh, your SMMA course. Yeah. At first, I was a bit uh, skeptic. I was like, "What is this online business thing?" I was at the time I was a student, so I was really focused on uh, on studying. My parents were like, yeah, well, "What is this thing? Online business? It doesn't work." All of this didn't buy. Um, I had my first exam in university. Um, I've put a lot of work into it. I go to the exam, I go out of the exam and, um, I talk to the other people that are good in, uh, it was a math exam. I talk to the other very good math students. They all have different answers than me and they have the same ones. So I think I felt, okay. I'm depressed. I go back home and, uh, I feel very weird. I almost have a panic attack because I put so much work into it and I felt like I was failing. So I had no way to find success in my life. So I was like, okay, I'm bad at studying. The only way I can succeed is launch my business. Okay. I take my mom's credit card okay. and I buy your course for a thousand dollars. At the time for me, it was pretty much everything I had in my bank account. Buy the course, the next day I'm like, what did I do? But I'm like, now I need to make $1,000. So I watch all of the videos. Three weeks after I bought the course, I signed my first customer for 1.5K a month. Wow. So you made all your money back. Yes. In less than a month. Huh. The months after I signed two more uh, clients, I'm at like three, four K a month. So for me at the time, it's crazy. I'm yeah. a student. I'm making as much as my parents. I'm like, how is this possible? Um, so I start studying online businesses. I, now I know that it can work. I know that I can learn. I know that online business is real. And a few years later, I'm making millions of dollars every year. There you go. A few years later, I'm making eight figures and it all started because of you. So I want to thank you for all of this. Um, I, it's probably mostly you, so I won't take credit for it, but um, I'm glad I was a part. Yes. I, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at today if I never found your videos in your course. So that's cool though. You were in there early, like yes. pre 20, cause I launched 67 steps in July, 2014. It was yeah. $1 for the whole course. 
Yes, I bought it for $1. You bought it for yes. You got the good deal. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd change it to $1 a video. Yes. That, okay, I remember that. Yeah, that was July. And the, yeah, a few months later, then you had the whole ad thing. Yes, and six months. That was about six months later. Yeah. Here in my garage was exactly. January. Yeah. That's a cool story. Yeah. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, but when we were at this conference in uh, in London, that was a very funny moment as well. I was I was back home. I was uh, on my phone and my partner comes and he's like, oh, Yomi, uh, Ty Lopez is in London. And you were like five minutes away from where I live okay. for the conference. And I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah, let's go. Uh, I tried to talk to the organizer to let them let me speak, speak because at right. the time I was like, big on YouTube already yeah. and stuff. So I was like, yeah, maybe can I talk before Ty comes? And you were like, no, 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 we don't care, etc." <laughs> and so I wanted to meet you. And then at some point you were like asking questions and I wanted basically to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making, I'm doing great because of you. Yeah. So I wanted to, to say that. And uh, I, I was my hand like this and you were not asking me. Oh. So at some point you were talking, I stand up. Yeah. And I start talking, I'm like, just tie one second. I want to thank you. And I, I told you that I bought your course and I'm making millions yeah. now. The whole room starts clapping. Yeah. And then you remember what you told me? Remind me. You told me, please, can you say that one more oh, time yeah, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. can record it? Exactly. Get the video cameras. <laughs> yes, exactly. Bring the, gr vi bring the video crew in. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That's good. Yes, I like that, was that, man. Three years ago. But that was... Yeah. Yeah, probably pre-COVID, yeah, 2019. Yeah, 2019, yeah. probably, yeah. How do you feel okay. when you hear stories like this? Because I guess it's not the first time. It's not the first time. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm not a super emotional guy, so it's like, I don't know, I'm kind of logical. I'm like, I, I'm, the way my brain actually works is like, I'm glad to know it worked. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, because when I first started, even now, people were like, this is a scam. It's never going to work. You're not going to be able to teach people online. People should just go to college. And I was like, no, man, like you can learn way faster if you find somebody who's doing it. So when I hear stories like this, I'm kind of like, I th I, I'm glad to hear it works <laughs> because I feel like so many people do stuff. One of my mentors used to say, Ty, the worst thing is to grow old and realize you got good at the wrong thing. And I feel like a lot of people, um, I, I read the word, the top three regrets of the average human is who you marry. People like 80% of people regret who they marry your career. A lot of people, but also people regret their education. Cause I feel like you get old and you realize like, let's say you're 30, you realize you went from age six to age 18, 12 years. You weren't distracted. You could have learned so much stuff and you don't remember anything useful that you learned. You're like, I didn't learn how to do any business. I didn't learn how to buy a house. I didn't learn how to negotiate deals, public speaking. It's all memorization. So it's always when I hear something where, where somebody's like, nah, this works. Practical application, practical. Yeah. School mostly is like memorized stuff. It's not even now with AI and computers, is it good to know that six times six is 36? Maybe, but it's not as good as knowing how to problem solve. It's not as good as knowing how to build your own business. <laughs> if I if I could grow up, know six times six is 36, or know how to make $10,000 a month, I wish I had spent all my childhood doing that. And why do you think most people don't realize this? Humans are very, look, one of the biggest questions I've asked, I have a mentor named Dr. David Buss. He's a psychologist, very famous now. He, he's from Harvard. And uh, one of the questions I still ask him a lot is, what's the science of why we're so stubborn? Because society's just stubborn. We're still teaching people. The Germans started teaching people in classrooms in the late 1800s to just memorize stuff. And now 150 years later, or do, I don't think there's a good reason. I think people, humans don't like risk. Mm -hmm. So for the government to change education, that's a big risk. No politician wants that risk, yeah. especially not in France. <laughs> They're like, I don't want that. I mean, Americans either. Nobody wants to be the person that switched how you train kids. We talk a lot about education in the podcast. If you could change something about the school system, maybe on yeah. the education, what, what would you do? I think when kids are young, they should just run around. 
like Sweden, they have like six year old, seven year old, eight year old. They do like forest school. You yeah. just like run around in the school. I because most of human, most of business, most of making money, most of human happiness is actually social skills. So letting kids run around and learn how to interact is more valuable than making people memorizing is only now with Google memorizing is not that valuable. So I would I would switch the school system from memorizing things to mastering social skills. For example, learn how to read people, learn how to read narcissists, learn how to read deceptive people, learn how to read Machiavellian. That's a skill. Nobody in school teaches that. But the most important thing you'll need to know for the rest of your life, who your business, who should be your business partner, who you should have kids with, these are all social skill things. So I'd switch school to more psychology probably. Yeah, and about, public speaking. Yeah, about reading people. Um, I know that uh, it's uh, something that interests you a lot yeah. and you practice a lot. Yes. If you had to give like a small masterclass in reading people. from someone that is like Ooh. starting from scratch, how, what are the main things to learn and how do you learn that? So number one, I built a quiz company, right? And the way I learned to read people, I've tested like 800,000 people. So I'll meet somebody, I'll look at their body language. Vocabulary is a big one. Listen to the word choices people make. For example, I was asking some of my team here, do you like Dubai? And I could tell I learned something about Sarosh sitting over there. Sarosh likes fancier things, which makes sense. You can, if you, okay, so you can't see on camera, but so look how Sarosh is dressed, okay? Look how Adam's dressed. <laughs> so Adam said to me, he's dressed very casual, shorts. Uh, you might want to pan over there for a millisecond, but shorts, and he's from Australia, okay? And so... And then you look over at Sarosh. Sarosh is like almost got a suit on. And so I think a lot of reading people is don't ignore obvious signs. So I can tell he cares more about status. That I call it the four M's of motivation. Material things, number one. Mating, number two. Uh, movement or freedom, number three. And mastery status. So I can tell like Adam does not care as much about status. You can see how he's dressed. He doesn't care if you all meet him and think he's a housekeeper. Like, you don't care. But Sarosh wants to be perceived as a more sophisticated person. And so when he came to Dubai, because Dubai is all about status, what's the most important thing you can have in Dubai? I was talking to, I was just with Iman Ghazi for lunch and his driver drove me here to this in their Phantom Rolls Royce. And I asked, The driver, I said, he goes, I don't see many Rolls Royce in Dubai. He goes, but what's really valuable in Dubai is your license plate number. Yeah. Having the number one, which to me is insane. Like, I don't like. Adam, do you think, would you spend a million dollars to have the license plate number one? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> it's but Sarosh might. It's but Sarosh might. It's an investment, though. Yeah, but for me, this is where I said a lot of stuff's genetic. Yeah. I don't, you were asking me a master class. Don't forget the obvious. That's number one. It's obvious that he cares less about how he dresses than him. Number two, don't forget about genes. It's very genetic. We think we have free will, but if you look at your ancestors, things start to make sense. You're like, oh, my dad was that way. My grandma was, you know, your four grandparents are the same as related to you as your eight great grandparents and your two parents. And so when you when you realize how genetic thing is, it's easier to read people. In fact, I could just meet your two. What's your two parents like? How would you define them? They are both uh, very stubborn. <laughs> is he stubborn? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little? <laughs> kind of, yeah. My, One to ten. how stubborn How stubborn do you think you are? I, I, not as much as my parents. Um, okay. uh, because I work on myself, like I try to... So before... Because I work, know one thing, I know one yeah. thing. Yeah. I know that conviction are biggest enemy from the truth than lies. There you go. That's Nietzsche. And I've, I've learned that when I was 14. From me. Yeah, from There you. you go. From uh, the 67 steps. 
So I've worked on that since I was yeah. young. So I think I overcome and I still try to overcome it. Um, but see, that's good. You know yourself. Yeah. Your ancestors are stubborn. So you know what to work on. Yeah. That's it. It doesn't mean you can't overcome your genetics. Mm. It's kind of like Angelina Jolie. Her family has breast cancer. So she paid attention to getting checkups a lot. So I think that that's the in my master class of reading people. Don't forget your genes, your ancestors. It doesn't mean you have to be exactly like them, but it tells you what you have to fix. Would you mom or dad one to ten? How narcissistic do you think they are? There's different kinds of narcissism. My mom is probably um, three. My dad the six. So not maybe, very. Yeah. How about you? Uh, my mom probably. Does your mom watch the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> might have to say gotta be careful. So what's the real number? <laughs> no, my mom takes a lot of care for her. So yeah. I think she's around seven probably. And your dad? And my dad takes less care of him, but he still cares about her parents. So I would say six. And it's not just, nar there's seven types of narcissism. So one type is how you look. But there's other types like want to be the expert, want to be the most attention, also thinking their ideas are better than other people's. That's a, there's seven kinds. So, but the masterclass, meet people's parents. <laughs> Before you marry somebody, meet their genes. You're basically marrying the parents, right? Because your kids also, I mean, it's crazy how we used to think before we understood genes, you used to think, okay, yes, you're going to be the same skin color, similar hair, eye color. But now scientists, when they decode the genome, they're like how angry you are, patience, how much self-control you have, willpower, discipline, organization. These are all in the genes. Even happiness, apparently. Happy, oh, there happiness. are some <laughs> neurotransmitters uh, more or less in the brain and yes. it will determine if you're happy or not. Yes. More than 50% of happiness is genes. Great. Where did you get that number? Because I've, I've, I've researched that a lot. That's yeah. actually a topic of, of debate on the podcast yeah. that we had a bunch of times. So what do you, th what, what do you think? It is? I agree with you. I think that the society uh, uh, thinks that everything is like learned, but I think that yes. it's not true. Uh, it's only a small part. I, I would guess like maybe 40%, yes. 60% I think comes from the genes. But uh, this is, uh, most people higher. disagree. I think higher. Yeah, yeah, probably. Higher. But there is no, I, I've, looked to, uh, I've looked it up. I, I, I didn't find like, I think the studies I found were like more like 30 to 50%. From Ch Chat GPT is politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> it's woke. That's the one thing you can't find good answers on yeah. artificial intelligence. But like, if you look at, there's a good book called Evolutionary Psychology by Dr. David Buss. There's another good book on happiness called The Happiness Hypothesis. It's by a PhD, Columbia. And there's a book on anxiety called, it's called Anxious by Joseph Ledoux, French name. Um, he's a professor at Columbia in New York. Uh, genetics. Here's the thing. A good way to think about happiness is your baseline. When nothing's good and nothing bad's happening, some people wake up, nothing good's happening, nothing bad. They just wake up and their life is neutral. They're a four of happiness. Yeah. Then there's some people who wake up and everything's going bad in their life and they're a seven. So environment allows you to change the baseline a little bit, but the baseline is genetic. Mm. That's why you look a lot of the great thinkers of all time. I don't think this is not totally understood, but for example, bipolar, um, manic depressive, oftentimes very intelligent people have this. Nobody quite, un one of my friends that's on his way to Dubai right now, he's one of the top neuroscientists, PhDs in the world. He said, Ty, did you, I became a neuroscientist because we know more about space than we know about the human brain. So be careful when people tell you and say, oh, well, this studies, the studies are just getting started. But if you use common sense, 
you notice that you have one friend who had a bad childhood but is happy and another friend who had rich parents, everything was good, and they're depressed. Mm -hmm. So if it's environment, it should be the opposite. So common sense. I was going to say the third thing on masterclass of reading people is just common sense. It's common sense that some families are unhappy families. I, I had a family growing up. They had multiple kids uh, who committed suicide. They had like six kids. Two of them killed themselves, m m teenagers. That family, nothing was wrong. They, they were a normal family. Then I had another friend. His dad was in, my dad was in prison. His dad was, we were happy. It was very genetic. So the good news is you can change your genes up a little bit. But look at Elon Musk, a perfect example. I just saw an interview with Elon Musk one month ago. And he said, I don't, he said, they said, do you want to do anti-aging so you can live longer? He said, no, because when death comes, I think I will welcome it. It's very French, by the way, to be kind of like, no, I'm, life is tough, <laughs> right? <laughs> but he's the richest man in the world. He's pretty respected. But he admits, like, I'm a, he's probably, let's say five is average. He's for sure a three or a four. I saw another interview. He's been doing a lot of interviews. He did another one. He said, I don't think anybody would want to be me. He goes, I often sleep alone, even though I don't have to. He was saying, I'm lonely. At age 12, he said a book changed his life. The Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy. He's like depressed. He strikes me as a suicidal type person. But when you read that new autobiography and you read about his mom and dad, complicated parents. Yeah. Both of them. So he probably just inherited this baseline. Now, I bet you, here's the thing. So let's say his baseline, I'm just going to hypothetically, let's say he's a four. So when nothing good or nothing bad is happening, five is average, he's a little bit four. Now, because he's the richest man in the world, he's experiencing more happiness, for sure. So he probably comes up to a five. So that's environmental. You know who Pete Davidson is? Yep. So Pete Davidson, every guy's like, oh, I want to be Pete Davidson. He dates every beautiful woman. He's like, whatever, the Kardashian, every, it's like, have you seen the websites? Like who has Pete Davidson dated? Yeah. But he says he wakes up super depressed every day. And he says he has to work on, he's had, he has a whole mind exercise just to get himself to like a five. Most guys see him like rich, famous. All women want to date him. You would think you'd be a nine. Yeah. But when you're born a four, I don't know if you ever become a nine. Yeah. I think that most people don't want to believe that because it removes power from us. That's right. And uh, if you are born with good genetics, then yes. if we if we are born with good genetics, then if we succeed, it's not because of us. Right. And we yeah. have born with bad genetics, then we can't succeed. So yes. there's a lot of downside believing in that. So I... Most people don't want to, to see the truth, I think. But you know what? I think it's the opposite. Here's my thing. If I know, this is, I call it the, the 60 30 10 rule. To be, let's take money, okay? To be successful. I, I've been around all kinds of successful people. I started out, you know, my mom was a single mom, my dad was in prison. I never met anybody who even made 30,000. I think my mom made $10,000 a year when I was growing up, 10, 12,000. I just went back last week to see the house that I grew up in. It's a little house. It's like not much bigger than this room. When I was little, I thought it was a big house, you know. But I've seen that side. That's not rich. Then I've been business partners with people on the Forbes list. I know many billionaires, on real billionaires, not internet billionaires. People on the Forbes list. Um, I think 60% is fate, not luck. Fate and fortune, meaning things outside of your control. 30% of your financial success is you, your behavior. And 10% is other people around you, your competitors, things like that. For example, one of my mentors is Tillman Fertitta. He's a billionaire. He's worth $7 billion. He's on the Forbes. He's the richest man in Texas. He owns a basketball team, the Houston Rockets. He owns the Golden Nugget. His nephews own the UFC. How did he, he make his money? 
Alcohol. Restaurants. Restaurant. He's the he owns is the richest man in the world. Hard business. People say he can't make money in restaurants. He made seven billion. But I asked him, "What's your story?" He said, "Well, about twenty years ago, I was making a little bit of money. I owed a big loan to one bank in Texas, okay, and I couldn't pay it, and they were going to take all my business because he couldn't pay them back." That bank just magically went bankrupt. And so in America, when a bank goes under, the U.S. government steps in to protect. So the U.S. government stepped in. They were so inefficient. You know how governments are inefficient and bureaucratic? They forgot that he owed them millions of dollars. Took them five years to remember that he owed them money. He said, and in that five years, he was able to get rich. But he said, if it wasn't for that luck, he's like, I would have been out and never probably become a billionaire. So you look at every story of people. First off, you're, you're born, if you're born healthy, a lot of people aren't born healthy. Millions of people are born with HIV on day one. They have a whole bunch. So, but here, here's my thing. A lot of people don't like when I say that. They're like, no, it's not luck. I, the harder I work, the luckier I become. Okay, that's true. But I think it actually puts less pressure on you, makes you happier. Because if you're not successful, you don't have to totally blame yourself. Mm. You can still blame yourself 30%. You're like, I didn't work hard. I didn't think things through. But it gives you hope that, okay, maybe fortune will flip my way. So let me keep working harder and not give up. But if you're successful, it keeps you from being cocky. Mm. Because I've seen people, look, I have 100 million, more than 100, like 400 million people have watched my stuff. We, we tried to calculate. It's at least 200 million. It's probably, Google did a calculation for me. They think 400 million people. I get a lot of people talking to me. I've seen a lot of dudes, men more than women, make money. They go from zero. They start making one, two, three, four, five, ten million dollar profit. And they get cocky. Because they don't realize 60% of it was luck. If you believed it was luck, you would not get too cocky and you'd keep learning. Because you'd be like, the only thing I can control is the 30%. Let me get really, and then the other 10% learn how to read people. So you can actually control. So I think it's actually freedom. I think it's no freedom. The thought that everything is you, to me, is the most pessimistic message ever. If you fail. Or if you succeed, because what happens if you succeed and then you stop succeeding? Then you blame yourself on, here's a good example, Victoria's Secret. The founder of Victoria's Secret. I don't, I don't, never met him. He built that brand. He sold it for millions of dollars. Then it became a bigger company. He got so depressed, he jumped off a bridge, killed himself, left his, jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. If he had my philosophy, he'd be like, fortune was pretty good. I sold it for millions. Who cares if the next guy sold it, made a billion? That was just fortune for them. But instead, he took a good situation in his mind, and he's like, I should have held on to the business longer, and I should have not. He blamed himself 100% for not being able to predict that would become a billion-dollar company. I have a friend who, you remember MySpace? You ever heard of MySpace yeah. before Facebook? Yeah. My friend Tom he started MySpace. Didn't get as big as Facebook, but it sold for five hundred million dollars, and his cut was about fifty million. He didn't get depressed. By the way, he's in my sixty-seven steps, but he's not that depressed. He's like, I made fifty million. Yeah. Sometimes I saw somebody on Instagram making fun of him. They're like, Mark Zuckerberg made fifty billion. You only made, you know, fifty. And he's like. But I'm still, I'm still pretty good. I got 50 yeah. million bucks. I haven't had to work for 20 years. Yeah, that's that's the big difference between like happy and unhappy people. Like yeah. when they see the bright side every time. That's right. And also for confidence, people that are confident when they fail, they think it's external exactly. things. And when they succeed, they think it's them. Yes. <laughs> and people that are unconfident is the opposite. When yes. they succeed, they, they think they had luck. And when yes. they fail, they think it's on them. Yeah. So it's very important and you can be very... You can change your view of yourself yes. and the world if you 
use it if you yes. use this bias in your brain yes. <laughs> to your advantage manipulate your own brain that's a good life lesson if you have one life skill it's like be able to stick something in your ear and just go let me reinterpret the story mm. do you feel like you've been lucky uh, along your entrepreneurial journey um i think that you know it's it's like stats you can get lucky for a small period of time yeah uh in a limited amount of tries but if yeah. you replicate it if you do it multiple time over a long period of time then it means it's probably not luck mm. um so but that's your 30 percent. 30 percent is a lot yeah i think that most luck actually comes from comes the day you're born yeah so i i also agree with the part of luck that you describe but if you get good genes, you're born in a wealthy yeah. country, you get good education, you have good parents. Yes. Uh, you don't have like a major psychological or physical yeah. problem, health issues. Then the rest, you have a good amount that you can influence. Um, yes. But most people... But remember, life's this. not over. Like, there can be a nuclear war. Yeah. The, most smart people think right now there's a 5 to 10% chance of nuclear war. Even somebody like Warren Buffett, He's been saying that. He's like, in the next 50 years, it's a high likelihood there'll be a nuclear war. There's just so much nuclear. And you see right now, Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, Israel, Middle East. It's a big deal. And all these countries have some access to weapons. So me and you can say, oh, well, we're successful. But look what happened in my grandma's time. Like Germany hmm. becomes wealthy, then it becomes poor again. France becomes wealthy. Because you gotta, it depends how long your time horizon is. Yeah. We need to have this conversation in 20 years. <laughs> the longer you live, the more time there is for fate and fortune. You know, if you read the ancient books, the Greeks. So you like, think Lux increases uh, over both a long, long. In both directions. In both directions. Fate getting better. Yeah. Fate getting worse. Fate getting better. Okay. If you look, for right. example, look at companies. Black, the first big, they just did a new movie on BlackBerry. The big company before this iPhone company. I mean, it, it, it was a new movie called BlackBerry. It's a good movie, a good business movie to watch. It was the dominant company. And then it just, yeah, you could say the CEO made a few mistakes and this. But it's luck because... If the one guy who went to work for Apple under Steve Jobs, who came up with a touchscreen, sometimes it's little things like his wife wanted to live in Seattle and didn't want to live in New York. And so this one guy goes here. Butterfly effect. Don't you think that if you put the best entrepreneur ever in this situation, it turns it around? Maybe. But okay. So if you're guess. very, very good, you negate. So who's the, the best? Uh, I mean, by. In your opinion. By standards, you guess. Elon Musk. Okay. So. You ever heard of the, the winner's paradox? Yes. When you win, you win more. No, no, no. It's a different no, one. So let me give you an example. Yeah, I'll give okay. you a simple example. Paradox. Okay. Let's say 10 men or I was just, have you seen this movie Alive where this football team in South America crashed? There's a movie called Alive. There's a book. You should see this book. Anyway, so imagine, just hypothetical. Somebody's flying from Brazil to Colombia. The plane crashes. Okay, there's 10 guys in the plane, small plane. And let's say one guy's just sitting in the back of the plane, okay? And the plane breaks in half and the first nine die, guys die because they're in the front of the plane and this guy was in the back. It's not really skill. He didn't purposely go, oh, I'm safer in the back. He just sat there. Now we write books about him. We go, mm. what was this guy's morning routine the day before he mm. woke up? Oh, he woke up at four in the morning. Oh, if you want to be successful and survive anything, four in the morning. Oh, he liked bacon. Oh, bacon is really, you see this with diet. There's one dude who's vegan, yeah. who's healthy, and another dude. That's because genes and fate and randomness is very powerful. So let's say Elon Musk. How do we know? I think what's. So e let's take Elon. Do you know that? Four years. I remember the first time I ever heard the name Elon Musk. I think it was 2009. I was living in Hollywood and I was reading the Wall Street Journal and the front page, it's a whole front page. It said, the man who scammed his investors out of $3 billion. 
He borrowed $3 billion for, it was for Tesla, and they're going to lose everything. He was bankrupt almost every single year, 2013, 14, 15, 16. He even says this. What really saved Elon Musk was probably COVID. COVID changed so many dynamics of the world. All of a sudden, now he was successful. Don't get me wrong. He's obviously skilled. He's for sure skilled. But PayPal, so you have Elon Musk. He sells his first company. He gets into tech. Actually, Bill Gates is a good example. You know the richest man. Is. If you want to actually argue, why Elon Musk? Why do you think Elon Musk is the best? I Just tell me why. Because he succeeded multiple times in different interest industries uh very big okay so i think you can get you can be lucky and stumble onto like a very good opportunity and you ride it as long as you can this can be luck because you are at the right place with the right business the right idea but if you are able to create multiple very successful businesses yes. in very hard industries yes. then you must have something. that to me that means he's very good at the 30 percent. he is very good yeah. most people the th imagine it's a pie so 60% is fate and fortune, 30% is your effort, 10% is people around you. So this 30%, most people don't fill that up. Mm. They have no skill, so they only fill up 1% of the 30. Elon probably filled up the whole 30. But let's take Bill Gates. Bill Gates, if he had not given his shares away for to charity, he'd yeah. be worth $1.2 trillion. Microsoft's worth 2.7 trillion last I checked. He owned 56%. Mm. So actually, if you want to know who's the most successful, it's probably him. So now when we study Bill Gates, one thing we notice about him, at age 12, he was one of the only kids in the world to have a personal computer. Is that luck? His dad was the wealth, one of the wealthiest people in his city was able to put him in a school and that school just happened to be like the first school to purchase a computer. So Bill Gates, by the time he was 16, 18 years old, he had more personal computer experience than it. Steve Jobs, talented guy, okay? Apple, first trillion dollar company. Steve Jobs, he tells this story and I don't think people listen. He says when he was uh, like 12 or 13 years old, there used to be a company called Hewlett Packard, HP. It's a big computer company. He said, I was trying to build computer stuff and I called Bill Packard or Hewlett. He called him in the phone book as a 12 or 13 year old and said, can I borrow some computer parts? And the guy gave it to him. Well, did you grow up in a place near the top computer people? So at age 13, you could ask, that's just luck. Steve Jobs happened to be born in San Francisco area, or I don't know if it's San Francisco. So we, when we look at people that are successful, I think we take the 30% and we inflate it to like 90. I don't think so. And you know what? The more I watch people, the more I'm pretty sure this is true. For example, I see people coming and going. You can be good three times in a row. Then the fourth time you fail. So I don't know. I think history is on my side. I think if you know a good thing to do, imagine the 15 smartest people in the world, not just smart, like book smart, but the 15 people you respect the most are in this room from all of history, last 10,000 years. Who, do, who would you put in the room? Whew. Not just business, just life. It's a very hard question. <laughs> you look at sports. Already, luck plays a big role in genes. So athletes. They... The most influential people? Yeah, uh, but who, if you were going to make a wise council of the right, wisest right. people in his, Einstein. Uh, wisest people. Einstein, let's say. Yeah. Stephen Hawking, maybe. Um, Sigmund Freud. Depends what you want to do. Confucius. Rockefeller. Elon Musk, maybe you would have. Yeah. So if you put those 15 people in a room from all history, Confucius, Plato, Socrates, Napoleon, Bonaparte. Okay, that's one to talk about if you want to talk about skill. And I said, I think, and, and you find them at the end of their life. They're 90 years old, not at the beginning. And I said, I think success in life is 60% fate and fortune of the world, genetics, economies, wars, 
I think most of that room would be like, yep. I don't think they'd be cocky. Mm. I don't think that room, take Napoleon. Napoleon is really, I, I, I stand up for France to America. I tell you, Napoleon was the first trillionaire in modern times. Yeah. He's probably the Self richest guy. Yeah, but I mean, more, more than just one trillion. Mm. He, he controlled Western Europe, he even conquered Moscow. He's probably worth $5 trillion. He's the richest. But when you start to read the story, he was crazy intelligent. And his dad was very smart. And his mom was very smart. He inherited great genes. He went to a school in Polytechnic, like the top university. And he was a math genius. All these things. But you know what? And he won the most battles in history. 62 major battles. He won 52 of them. Nobody's ever had that track record of success. If you look at Alexander the Great, had six major battles only. Julius Caesar, hardly any. Napoleon had 62 battles and won 52 of them. Nobody has that track record. But you know how he would pick his generals? The luckiest. <laughs> he would find out from a battle, he'd be like, there was five generals and like, Two of them got hit by a cannonball. The guy who was just standing there who no cannonball hit, he's like, I want that guy. They're like, don't you want to know if he's skilled? He's like, no, no, no. He's lucky. I want that guy on my side. There's all these times when Napoleon had a bullet go through his hat and go through his... In fact, if you talk to the top physicists in the world, I'll tell you a crazy theory. But that 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 is not... That is an intelligent theory. We might live in a multiple universe, okay? Multiverse, they call it, where every possibility is happening at the same time. So Stephen Hawking called this M theory. It's, it's one to the 500 power. You know, like one, five, zero, zero. That's how many universes there are right now. There's a universe where Napoleon did 62 battles and lost all of them. There's another parallel universe where he won all of them. So we don't even know if we're in the universe. Which universe are we in? You might, you're in a universe now where you're making whatever, eight figures. Maybe there's a universe where you're making nine figures. Mm. Or there's one where you're broke, where everything failed. Yeah. What if you hadn't found my YouTube video? Yeah. Maybe it would if you had done well on a test. You might have a job as a nine to five making 180000 wife, two kids, and you might not even know that you're unhappy because mm. you never knew what it was like to make 10 million. Mm. I think there's more randomness. But like I said, I'm not somebody who thinks you shouldn't work hard. To me, this gives you the message. 60% is out of your hand. You better work hard on the 30%, which <clears throat> is you. You better master all the skills, get all the mentors, read all the books, get disciplined, wake up, surround yourself with the right people. Because that 30%, it sways luck. Yeah, yeah. But don't you think we can also attract luck by That's evolving parallel universes? Yeah. Yeah. And I think also that when you believe something, you need to think about, do you want to believe the truth? Or do you want to believe the thing that helps you the most? Yeah. And I think that the most you believe that success in your, in your, is in your control, the more you will work, the yeah. more you will try to improve. And that's, I think, also a good but mindset. 30% is a is lot. A bit, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm not saying... But it gives you a lot of room for excuses. You know, when you fail, you can say, ah, I wasn't lucky. Or if yeah, you believe then you just wake control, up and start again. Yeah, but if, it, you think, if you think it's in your control, you're like, oh, I failed. It's my fault. What can I improve? in order for this not to happen again. Yeah, but I if think, think it's only anyway. lucky. Okay, I'm going to try it one more time. And you it's don't not 100% luck. It's only 60. Yeah. <laughs> so if I fail, I go, well, Ty, don't get too depressed. You know, Everyone right. fails. <laughs> Everybody, look, man. Name somebody. Just name, name a hero of yours that we all know. Name any hero. Yeah. Anyone you admire. Who is somebody? Uh, like a superhero or? Anybody. No, no, no. A person. A uh, person? Um, Who do you admire? I would say I like uh, at the moment I like Alex Ormuzi. Okay, you know him. I I yeah, I know all those people. I mean I don't know him personally, but all these people. 
yes, I've been in this space a long time. Do you think he's had failure? Yeah, probably. And he just kept going. Yeah. That's a little bit luck also. Because if you think about it, this character trait, you can inherit it from your parents or you grow in the right household where yes. you had to be resilient from a young age. So luck is yes. a little bit of everything yes. and nothing at the same time. Yes. So it's a very complex topic, I yeah, think. Resiliency is very genetic. So some people, I'll give you an example, like there's people who have bad childhoods. They've done scientific studies. They have, it doesn't affect them at all. Mm. People grew up super poor. They were abused and they just like grow up and become normal. And then there's people who one time they were bullied in school at age 12 and someone said, oh, you're fat. And they have like an eating disorder for the rest of their life. Yeah. But what do you do with this belief? Like, how is it serving you or helping you? Because you remove all the power from Not your all, life. Because it's still 30%. Yeah. My you work answer, as much as you can on the 30%. Yes. And the 10. Yeah. The yeah. 10 is reading other people. Yeah. yeah. I understand. And so we've, uh, we've jumped into it yeah, right this away. This is a complicated philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, people, people don't like to hear it, but I'm telling you, yeah. if you get the 15 wisest yeah. people in history, almost all of them say at the end of their life, they're like, mm. man, I thought I could control everything. Mm. But I can't control everything. Yeah. <laughs> so quickly for the people yeah. that the few people that don't know about you, we have a lot of French yeah. people watching. Uh, can you summarize what you did, your story very fast? Yeah. And then I have a few questions about it. So fast. So yeah, I started a business. I started being an entrepreneur. I didn't have that good of a childhood. But when I was a teenager, I was like, I'm going to find mentors. So I found a mentor on a farm when I was 19 named Joel Salatin. He's the first person who taught me about business. I formed my first company there, made $12,000 profit. I was very, as the most money I ever saw. I got a check for $12,000, I almost fainted. Um, after that, I just became a serial entrepreneur. I got in finance business, but in 2001, I built my first funnel. So people have been doing funnels. I think of ClickFunnels, Russell. I'm like, man, I was building funnels in 01. I bought an online course from a guy named Corey Rudel in San Diego. It was $300, it was all the money I had. But there was no videos then in 2001. So it came in a book. You had to read it. It was an online course, it came in the mail and it was like a three ring binder with pages. And I read it and it said, you have to catch trends early. And the newest trend is Google ads. That's what he said. So I was like, I'm gonna try Google ads. And I, I, I was living in a mobile home, poor house, sleeping on a couch. I had $47 in my bank account. I saved up about 500 working and I bought that course. And it said, catch trends early, Google ads. So I'm, I went and I was working at an insurance company, just going door to door, knocking on doors. And I was like, I'm gonna try Google ads. And I made a Google ad and guess what? I went from zero dollars, took me about six months and I was making $8,000 a month. Changed my life. I never looked back. All from that course. So that's when I learned, don't be cynical. Catch trends early. <laughs> All the money is at the beginning. So, Sana, I mean, it's you gotta do that outside. It's to whispering is worse than no whispering. People don't realize that. Like sometimes people whisper. Whisper is like people opening in a movie like yeah. a cracker. You're like <laughs> <laughs> ASMR. Yeah, yeah. Your... Um, yeah, just type it to each other. So I started Google Ads and then I, it was weird. Within one year, I bought a company. I bought a nightclub business from some other guys. But I did it with no money down. I, it's merger and acquisition. I figured out how to take over a company. Then I had two streams of income. I was doing lead generation with Google ads here, kind of like an SMMA. And then I was doing nightclubs. And then from there, I just kept going, launched many businesses. And then around 2012, I was like, you know what's gonna be a big business? Personal brands. And I thought I was too late. 
I was like, oh, I'm too late. Joe Rogan has a podcast, Gary Vee, and Tim Ferriss. I don't know if you know Tim Ferriss. Yeah. I was like, man, I'm too late, but I think I'll just do it anyway. It's funny. I remember being like, I'm I'm way too late. So I started, I did a live stream in 2012. And I told people, I'll teach, I've been doing online business for 10 years. I was like, I'll teach you what I know. And I did a live, there was no live Instagram live. There was nothing live. But I got this software that corporations use, and I had a hundred people on the live stream, and I made a hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! I was like, "That's a lot." I mean, the conversion rate. There was no competitors. I was the only person really in the world reaching the whole world. There was some niche people, but no one like me. And so, 2012, I started. Instagram was new. I started posting to Instagram. I had been on Twitter since 2007. I had actually been on MySpace and Friendster in 2001. So I was already like 10 years. I knew social media would be big. And I started testing live streaming. And then I did this TEDx talk called uh, The Law of 33%. And it went crazy viral. It went to like 7 to 10 million views with no marketing. Just And then I was like, there's something here. Let me make... I'm going to take everything my mentors taught me and I wrote it down on a board and it was 300 things. So I was going to launch a course called the 300 <laughs> things and my friends like, no, it's that's too much. So I had just read an article. It said that uh, the average person takes 67 days to change their life. So I go, okay. Change your habit. You mean? Change your habit. Yeah. Yeah. Change your habit. So I took the 300 and I took the top 67. And I recorded one video on it and I sold it for $1 a video. And, and I made a viral video called Here in My Garage. It was like the first kind of viral YouTube business video. And it went, it went so big. It was back then there was, I was the, I was like the second biggest advertiser in the world. I mean, nobody was doing it. Catch trends early. The, I'll tell you this about luck. The number one thing that will make you lucky is to catch trends early. How do you do that? <laughs> Don't be cynical. Open-minded. Yeah, because even me, like the more successful you get, you get cockier. Yeah. And then you see other people doing stuff that is, is telling you that's a new trend and you'll be like, oh, I know better than them. And then you miss the trend. Mm. And what I, trend do you think there is right now? For beginners or advanced? Both. Well, there are different answers. Beginners need to catch different trends. It's like surfing. If you're a beginner, don't catch a 20 meter wave. You're going to die. <laughs> yeah, for but for if you're for advanced, beginners. you want to catch a 20 meter wave in, yeah. like in Portugal. So I would say for beginners, you know, that, believe it or not, even though it's saturated, 300,000 new people use the internet every day. So the market's getting bigger. So all the for beginners should do SMMA, e -com, like all, <laughs> all that basic stuff yeah. still works. It'll probably work for another, you probably got two oh, yes. more years before it gets crazy saturated. Because now, even though it's saturated, 300,000 new people use the internet every day. So it's like offsetting. If you're advanced, building a diversified company, buying buying businesses, that's the trend. And that'll be here for it. So I'll be selfish a bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm interested in that as well. Yeah, uh, buying businesses, making deals. I know that it's been a big focus of yours uh, yeah. for the past few years. Quick masterclass on how to do that. How to buy? Yeah, so we got the masterclass on brief. Um, start out with start out buying companies that you don't have to put a lot of cash. Like the first business deal I ever did in '03, I put in zero money. Then the, I bought another business. I don't know, 2012, 2013. That was the first online business. Uh, about 11 years ago, that business, or one, uh, maybe not the first, one of the first, I had bought a few before that, but try to not, try to negotiate a seller finance where the seller, you just have to pay them a little bit per month. Because what I did in 2012, I bought two business partners were fighting. They had hired me to mentor them, right? They were fighting. And I realized these two business partners are never going to get along. I was like, you need a divorce. And I said, I'll buy you out your 50%. And they were like, hell yeah, they don't have to be in business with this other person. But I said, I'm only going to give you $10,000 <laughs> now. And then every month I'll give you, I don't know, $20,000 a month until I pay you. I think I was going to pay him $500,000 over like two or three years. 
So I bought that. I got half of the business and I looked at it. They had no email marketing. So I said, I'm going to send a daily newsletter to generate more sales. So I instantly that same month, we made 250,000 extra profit. Okay. I owned half. I paid myself 125 grand. Then the next payment came due and I gave them 10 grand. So I didn't even use my own. I used money from the company. Yep. From ignorance of. And the, yeah. And then 12 months later, I sold the other 50% back to the partner. So I made like a thousand X return on my money. So when you're starting out, do deals like that. Strategic deals in your industry where they want you because you're a brand name. You're a big personal brand. So use your personal brand to get you deals for cheap. That's the, there, the master class is over. <laughs> and then number two, you need really good lawyer. Well, I mean, the, number two, most lawyers suck just because they're a lawyer, don't trust them. Yeah. There, there's 1% of lawyers are worth. Yeah. And then number three, um, read. Like, I remember I bought a company. I own a company with a guy who's on the Forbes list. These Forbes list guys, billionaires are the toughest guys to do business with. But I read the document more than him. I, I rented a hotel room, two hotel rooms. It was like a 600 page purchase agreement. And I laid all the pages out and read them. And, and then I would change something and they would change it. And it took me two weeks of just sitting on the floor reading a deal, but I got a better deal than he did. So don't forget to read the documents. So many, I was, I was at, a guy, a lot of people follow me apparently in Dubai. I came here and all these people wanted to meet me. So I went to today. I was at the gym this morning with a guy who's getting ready. Somebody's going to buy his company. I said, did you read the documents yet? He goes, oh, I have good lawyers. I said, no. <laughs> Your lawyers have 100 clients. Yeah. You're one of them. Yeah. They're going to read the documents, but they don't care. They have 99 other guys. I said, did you print? And, and by the way, never read it on your phone. Print it out. I br usually I travel with a printer and a shredder. So number three, when you start doing deals, read it. It's boring, but if it's boring for you, then it's boring for them. And remember, I said you can control thirty percent yourself. You can control your discipline to read the whole document, and you'll find crazy things in these documents. People trying to cheat you, or things you can put in that make it better for your advantage. Yeah, I yeah. think like most uh, professions are like overrated. When you when you grow up, you you think all the doctors they know everything, no. all the lawyers they know their stuff, and in business you learn that uh, yeah, the top one percent of people they are very yeah. good, but ninety nine percent is average, and you don't want to give your health or your business yes. uh, if it's legal or not what you're doing <laughs> to to someone that is like not interested. And like you said, it's not. Yeah, it's not you. You're the only person that cares yeah. as much about like your yourself, life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no one is gonna. And care like a doctor, much. a doctor has a hundred people they see in one month. Yeah. How much should they're gonna think about you for five minutes? Yeah. And then you leave, and they don't think about you anymore. Mm -hmm. And you can't even get mad at them for that. No, yeah, I think it never, never give you mm -hmm. health. Yeah, uh, the responsibility of your health to someone else. That's right. Never give the legality of what you're doing to someone else. Yes. And never give your education away That's to right. someone else. Yes. So don't let the state, the, the yes. teacher, the school system teach you what you need in life because they don't care as much about your life as you do. And yeah, drop uh, I, out of the system. Yeah. The system does not care. That, that's also something I wanted to ask you. Um, you seem very passionate about like learning, you know, a lot of yeah. stuff. You've been studying a lot. You talk a lot about mentors over the last 10 years. What are like the big paradigm shifts that you had about learning? When were you like, haha, now I know how to learn more efficiently. How oh, I was doing this wrong about learning. Yeah. You read one book a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes too. I read it and I'm reading an interesting book now. Sometimes books take a couple days. I'm reading a book on free will. Hmm. Is there free will or luck? I was talking about this <laughs> with, uh, right on this subject. I'm right. It's called Determined by by a Stanford professor, Sapolonsky or something. It's a wild book, boy. Uh, determined. Okay, I was talking about this actually two days ago with my friend. It's right yeah. here. Um, it's hard to explain during a podcast. Yeah. But yeah. Sam Harris has another one. Yeah. Yeah. 
A lot of smart people don't. They believe everything's luck. Yeah, a lot I, of smart people. Are I can I kind of do. So I think I think that paradigm shifts for me. I mean, one. Of, I'll tell you a simple one. Read directly the books of the most intelligent people. So here's an example. Sigmund Freud, the psychologist. A lot of books were written about him. And a lot of people read books about him. No, read his writing. If you want to know, like, don't read. I read Stephen. I, there's a lot of books about physics. But probably the most respected physicist is Stephen Hawking. Read his book. Too many people are reading books that are like New York Times bestsellers. And they never read the most intelligent people's actual words themselves. A lot of people say Sigmund Freud is a disrespected scientist. We've disproved his theories. Mm. Well, of course we've disproved. He was born in 1860s, I think, or 18. Yeah, of course. They didn't even know about bacteria then. But when I read Sigmund Freud, I think he's the smartest person to ever live. And if you read Sigmund Freud, I mean... <laughs> I've been telling people for 10 years, smartest person I've ever read is Sigmund Freud. And people were like, no, my college professor said he was weird. He believed everybody wants to sleep with their mom and he did cocaine. Well, that's true. But you could still be the smartest person to ever live because everybody. And I read some, he did letters with Albert Einstein around World War II. They had a debate. And if you read Sigmund Freud, he's way smarter than Einstein. You read those letters, you're like, oh, my God. So my point is, one of the big realizations is if you want to become smart, re spend time reading the actual words of the most intelligent people. So I don't read as much modern stuff. I do, but I like books that have been around for a long time because that means they've stood the test of time. Yeah. So I do read some modern books. Like I said, I'm reading this book, Determined. It's a new book. But every day, let's see. Let me pull up my iBooks. Let's see what, I didn't have this planned. You read I, on your phone? Sometimes. I do audio books. Let's see what book is, there you go. Sigmund Freud is open. <laughs> I probably read this book. This book on happiness is the greatest book on happiness. It's the most intelligent book on happiness. Civilization is discontent. Pfft, nothing. I've read every famous book on happiness. I've read all the religious books. That's the most intelligent 10 pages I've ever read on happiness. Not even, I think it's, I think it's here and the second best is like here. So you can get very far. If you want to learn investing, read Warren Buffett. He has a book, which is all the letters he's written to his investors every year from the 1960s to right now. Once a year, he writes a letter. That's the best book on investing. If you could only have just one book, just that book of letters. But everybody I meet is like, I'm like, have you read it? No. Well, that's crazy. The best investor of the last 100 years, nobody's, read Rockefeller. If you want to be a businessman, Rockefeller was I mean, he was worth $600 billion. I meet people. Have you ever read Rock? You know Andrew Carnegie? So the richest man was Rockefeller. Second, Carnegie wrote a book called The Gospel of Wealth. Have you ever read it? Nope. Read his words. So I think the biggest, I think we live in a world where we forget. We read books by people who are good, just good at getting on the New York Times bestseller. Yeah. But the be I mean, who's a better business book? I have it on my phone. Sometimes I feel like old books are less relatable because the vocabulary <laughs> used is more complex and maybe new books are more appealing because it's easier to understand. Yeah, usually. but don't do it because it's more appealing. <laughs> yeah. That's it's like trap, saying that's trap. like saying I took a little class at the gym with the two kilos because it's more they yeah, have more music fitting. and dancing. Yeah. <laughs> well, but if you want to get strong, there's a corner of weights where it's boring and you're just sweating, but you get strong. Here, the car this this book's not that it's only this this book 
you can read in one afternoon. It's everything he knew. And by the way, that's that's the best businessman to ever live. Because Carnegie, or oh, Carnegie, he only worked two hours a day. He said, I'll never work more than two hours a day. And he became worth 400 billion. And Rock, Rockefeller, this is what I learned from reading actually Rockefeller's words. When he was about 55, all the hair fell out on his body because of stress. Like all his eyebrows, his eyelashes, his hair. It's a response from stress, right? And somebody interviewed him and said, what do you think about this? And he said, all the money I've made, it's not worth the stress that I went through. And that's why I learned, don't try to be the richest man in the world. Because if you go to the words of the richest man who ever lived, at least in the last 500 years, he said, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. If he could do it all over, he's like, look, I'm falling apart. But the second richest man made not 600 billion, but 400. And he said, I'll never, after age 30, he said, I'll never work more than two hours a day. So who would you rather be, Rockefeller or Carnegie? I'd rather be Carnegie. Mm -hmm. So I've also learned it's good to be second. Let somebody else be first. They take all the pressure. <laughs> like Elon Musk is getting all the pressure and Bernard Alnault mm -hmm. is number two. He's living a better life. Okay. So I just okay. ask you, uh, do you have an end goal in mind? End goal. And if so, what it is? I mean, not financially, because I feel like I'm not that motivated by actual money i'm motivated in the four m's i'm i'm very high on f movement freedom so i like adventure i like trying new stuff i like so for me i think the end goal is just keep experimenting with new things till i um, die <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what, <laughs> what was the happiest day of your life happiest day man that's a good happiest how about happiest year yeah like you know what's a happy year 2013 hmm. because I was building my personal brand, something new. I like new stuff. I wasn't at the top, but I was growing fast and there was like progress every day. They say you're happier if you make, if you go from making 100 grand to making a million, you're way happier than if you go from 100 million a year profit down to 10 million. Even though 10 million is still way more than what the brain only goes by contrast. Yeah. So 20, also 2013, I didn't have a lot of responsibility. I wasn't that well known. Being well known, it can be, is not as good as people think. It comes a lot of problems. You, you get people attacking you, people hating on you people. And so 2013, I was a local celebrity. People in Hollywood knew me, Los Angeles, but I wasn't globally well known at all. So I would do parties. I remember I would I, I used to work in the morning for like two, three hours. I was building software too. I had a software company, still do. And I would like, I used to put three good books, be like, I'm gonna read three books in three hours. And I would put three books. I, I wouldn't always finish them, but I'd read like half of one half. It was the equivalent of like one and a half books. And I didn't have anything to do, and I'd read, and I'd think about it. Then at night, I'd go out with friends. I had all I had all my friends working for me. That was a good year. It's good to be. You can be a emperor, a king, or a prince. An emperor is like you're the most googled person in the world. I've been the most googled person in the world for like a month. That's an emperor. You you know, emperor's not good. <laughs> you don't want to be emperor. That Elon Musk is an emperor of wealth. He says, I don't like life, you know? Um, you see the influencers now are the most well-known, most complicated life. King is pretty good. Or prince, I think, is when you're the happiest. So if you could, you would unfamous yourself? <laughs> Probably. I think you, so I think most men are happier with some fame, but yeah. local fame is good. So like, let's say you live in Paris, If you're like well known in Paris, you get just as much pleasure than if you're also known in, you know, Bhutan or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that, actually, you know, I think the thing that most people ask me when I talk about my business, yeah. is like, why don't you do English videos? Yeah. And one part of the reason is I really like the fact that I'm like known in France, but yeah. when I'm here, almost yeah. no one knows me. That's And a I good can deal. go to 90% of yes. the world. No one is going to yes. know me. I can be myself. It's all good. Yes. But 
I can also have all of the advantages of yes. being known in France. Yes. So I think most guys at one point in their life they want to go to a nightclub. <laughs> it's cr- <laughs> they want to go. It's crowded. There's ropes. They're not letting anybody in, and you pull up with your car, and you get out of your car, and like. The security's like moves it and open. Every man wants that once or twice. This is Yomi all summer in South of France. You like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, but once I, you had it, like I've had it now, yeah. then it's not as important. You used to it. Yeah. Now if I go to you a expect- club and people don't recognize me, but I've had it where it's like, oh. But that's also genetic. Some people love that more than others. You know, about but most the, men like that. It's yeah. funny. Like um, I'm thinking about. By um, buying a nightclub, there you go. And I was actually thinking about that. I was thinking about the fact that it would be a great idea to like kind of create a queue. Yes. And all of the table, you don't have separate queue for tables. Okay. You know, you have one queue, but you have one person that is like has a picture and can see who booked the table and comes like oh yes and takes the person yes. in front. Yes. That that would increase the, the customer oh, yes. satisfaction by exactly. a lot. I think. Yeah. <laughs> you can use this this way of the it's it's crazy because just you you it's like first class you know when you you take a a flight yeah most people the moment where they appreciate the most the first class is when they go in yes. front of all of the people that are yes. waiting yes the the Status brain is a yeah. big that's one of Dr. David Buss's psychology focuses is on the power of status it's more men than women have that women like status but not as most women's dream is not going to a nightclub and they <laughs> open it. that's a man, men like things that are show power yeah but yeah you're a king right so you're you're not an emperor you're not internationally known if you go to you know taiwan they're not going to be like ah but you're a king yeah, france is a big country and you're well known there so that's good i don't think you should try to be an emperor you think so? i think you can be happier by knowing when to stop too Some people never, that's actually Napoleon Bonaparte's problem. He never could stop. He should have just stopped at 60 battles. The last one is the one he fucking lost, you know? So it's it's good to be ambitious, but you also have, to, a man has to know his limits. And and that's, that's something you have to find out. It's kind of like, you know, fighting. I knew a guy that was super good at, you know, he was a strong guy who'd pick fights with people and he'd win every time. But one time there was a dude just too big and too strong and he got knocked out. And I said, you, did, <clears throat> you didn't know your limits. That guy's too big for you, you know? So I asked you about the happiest day of your life. Um, I don't know if you remember, but when uh, we've met in London, I told you that I made a million in a day with my e-commerce oh, yes. uh, website. Was that your happiest day? No, definitely not. No, no. yeah. But it was a happy day. Uh, yes, yeah, not your worst When day. I said that, yeah. you said... Yeah, a few years ago, I made one million in an hour. Yes, I've done that before. When is the day you made the most money and how did you do it? I mean, what year was that we met? That was 2019. I'm, yeah, I made a million. Just selling, just I had a program that I was selling, made more than a million in an hour, maybe even more. I always say it's like, first you make out a million in a year. Then you like want to figure out how to make a million in a month. Then you want to figure out how to make a million in a week. Then you want to make it in a day. Then you want to make it in an hour. I've never. Fi- Then you want to figure out how to make a million in a minute. And if you're Jeff Bezos, you make a million in a second. But a million in a second is hard. Even Jeff Bezos doesn't make a million dollars profit a second. So a man's got to know his limits. Maybe I'll just stop there. I made a mil. I don't need to make a million in a minute. If you can make a million in a minute, although you know what I think, I think. I think the human brain is much different than we think. The human brain never reaches. It never allows you, you know, like a rainbow and you think there's a gold at the side. But the when you run for the rainbow, it just stretches out longer and the rainbow just changes. So that's why I said I think what makes people I mean, sometimes the happiest days of my life. What's another happiest day of my life? These are good questions. Um. I feel the happiest like when I'm traveling. Be, sometimes on my farm, I feel happy. Nature is something that can make you happy. People live too much. That's the one problem with Dubai. It's too much city. If you live in Dubai, you got to go out in the sand dunes. 
or go on a boat and like get away. Human cities make us unhappy. So I, I'll say this. I don't know that I remember. Like I said, I'm not super emotional guy. So I don't have like super spikes up of happiness. And I don't really have super spikes now. I think that's genetic. So I have some friends, they can remember the happiest moment. I'm like, Shh, I can't remember the hap. Also, I can't even, people are like, can you remember when you became a millionaire? I'm like, no, I don't even remember. My brain doesn't quite work that way. I feel like I don't remember the past that much. I kind of move forward, you know? Sometimes that's a strength, sometimes it's a weakness. I feel like I don't experience, they say women experience much higher highs and lower lows than mm. men, you know? Do you talk uh, openly about uh, how much money you make or how much money you've made, stuff like this? You know what I tell men? You want your net worth online to say $5 million. That's good for the rest of your life because it's enough to get some respect. But if you show any more, you get, especially in America, there's lawsuits, man. Really? Pfft, America is... Uh, but I mean, people know that you're... Yeah, people are always trying to Google. It's funny. What's yeah. the most Googled thing about you? Is it your net worth? Yeah, one of the most? Probably, yeah. What's yeah. the top three? I, I don't know. Looked? Don't look it up. But if you just go to Google and you start typing your yeah. name, you'll see what comes up. as yeah. You know, they give suggested questions. Yeah. Don't, try, don't know. Try. Yeah, I think. Yeah, let's see. Try it. Type <laughs> in your own name. Let me see. Let me type but, in my own name. Let me see what's suggested. <laughs> We're all sitting here typing yeah, our but own I'm, name. It's biased. It's always like age, height, money, where you live. Let's see. Let yeah, look. Yeah. Ty Lopez, <laughs> net worth, quiz, books, age, Wikipedia. Yeah. Height, net worth 22. Yeah, net worth is twice, age, quiz. I like that, my quiz. I, I, I am happy that book shows up high. That means people associate me with books. Ty Lopez's wife. Oh, people Google my exes. Sometimes <laughs> I had a couple girlfriends that were uh, on my social media for years that were super popular. I dated one girl that was, I mean, everybody loved her. It was funny. It was funny. I learned a lot about what men's taste in or women. She was very kind of girl next door. She was... Uh, Maybe she she might have been around when you fought Kate when she followed me. I don't know if yeah, you yeah, on Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Found out she was an orphan, so she didn't know her genetics. She's half Swedish. It's like you you mix half Swedish with anything, you get a beautiful woman. Uh, you can be black Swedish, Asian Swedish, <laughs> anything. I Swedish. kinda disagree. You think? I went to Sweden for the first time last year and I felt like it was overrated. Where'd you go? What city? Uh, Stockholm. Yeah, but Stockholm, a lot of Stockholm is not Swedish people. It depends where you go. You might have gone to the tourist yeah, areas. Lots of Swedish people. Yeah? Yeah. But it, differ, it depends on taste again. Yeah, what's like your I, taste? I like brunettes. Okay, well, you went to, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> pretty obvious. You're, you're, you're like, Ty, you're not going to believe this. Uh, I didn't like this restaurant. I hate fish, and I went to sushi place. That, 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 you went to the wrong restaurant, man. Yeah. You would like Brazil. I like French girls. Oh, you like French? Yeah. French yeah, is France is the most brunette place ever. Yeah, south of France is very good. You like Moroccan? Yeah. How's Dubai for you? I have a girlfriend, so. Okay, if you didn't have your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> not not that good. What's bad about Dubai for dating? Um, I feel like Dubai is a very expensive city. Okay. Um, so lots of, like, I mean, most... Girls don't make as much money as guys, so most people that come here are like guys, entrepreneurs type. Yeah. So the girls either they like into, they like waitresses or hostesses or they work with Emirates. Right. But but the rest is like, uh, they come with the boyfriend. Yeah. And then you have a lot of like escorts and stuff. Yeah. But you don't have a lot of normal girls. They don't come. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't come here for studying. You don't. Yeah, yeah. You know. So that's where there's a problem. So there, where's better, south of France? Yes. Where do you think? I prefer Dubai, honestly. You prefer Dubai? Yeah, yeah. I like, um, because usually women in Dubai, they are more... Um, materialistic. Materialistic, no. They take m more care of themselves. And French girls, sometimes they are a little bit too simple and they don't have a lot to say. And so, uh, yeah, 
Uh, you guys do not agree. I, I, I prefer. I prefer. Usually, I, I prefer girls. Dubai. Keep talking. For no. A second. Did you see his face? No, because usually in Dubai you can meet girls from all around the world. So it's. I mean, I've never tried to meet a girl in Dubai, so I don't know, I, actually. But okay. you never met a girl in Dubai. No, because I was with my girlfriend all the time. I've been here. She's French. Yes. South France. Yes. What about you? You have someone? Not in Dubai. <laughs> I just come in and out of Dubai. <laughs> yeah, Dubai. I've lived in Scandinavia on and off. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you wouldn't like Stockholm if you don't like blondes. No. Yeah. You went to the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go to Sweden? No, never. Never. No. But uh, I, I prefer blonde compared to brunette. So I think I would like it. So you like all the Russians that are here? Yeah. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> I think <laughs> Russian girls are, are the most beautiful. Well, you know the word Rus in Russian, R-U-S? That means Viking in Finnish. So, like, the Vikings from Sweden came into Russia in, like, the 900s to around then. And then they mixed with the local tribes. Mm. And that's so you get Russian is, like, a little more exotic looking. Swedish is, like, the pure blondes. And Russian is, like, blonde mixed with a little... You know, a little of Asia, a little bit of East. So, yeah. do you don't have a girlfriend at the moment? No, no. Uh, and uh, Russians are complicated women. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a, like a serious relationship or what? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, I've had serious relationship for sure. Like I said, it, like a lot. I I just realized the most Google thing about me in the top three is Ty Lopez girlfriends. Everybody used to follow who I was dating. No, nah, men do better in general in a long-term relationship. Like, if you're not, you can get too distracted. Yeah. All the most successful guys got married at, like, 22. Like, Elon Musk had, like, six kids before he was 30. Jeff Bezos. It's actually people think you should have kids when, when you're more successful. I think it's the opposite. I mm. think if you want to make the most money, you should get married at, like, 23, settle down, have kids, and just work all the time. You know? I think it's about focus. Like, like if you're like always single, yeah. trying to like uh, get a girlfriend or get a woman, you're like it's it's a game. Yeah. And like business is a game as well. Yeah. And if you're playing two games, chances are you're not gonna become as good as the guy who's only playing one game. Do you think you're game. distracted by dating? Oh uh, yeah. When I'm <laughs> when I'm single, yeah, for sure. You're not single now. No, now I have a girlfriend. But is she uh, Russian? Uh, Ukrainian. Okay. Yeah. My income triples if I'm in a relationship. Really? Yeah, I've, I've computed it. <laughs> yeah. The first year I started making money, is the first year I had a girlfriend in my life. Same one as you have now? No. 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 I, I, for me, it makes a big difference also. Like the focusing when yeah. I'm in love with someone, I just work and I don't feel like I need to go out or text girls. The yeah. worst is testing on the on the phone because it takes so long yes it's crazy you need a chat they need to make a chat bot that's just all like ai yeah. downloads your videos knows your voice and just sit there and <laughs> chat with people I, nonstop. I, I know a guy who had an agency who was texting girls and getting date over like uh, uh tinder apps, whatever uh, yeah tinder and stuff uh there's a canadian company does that stuff. yeah so you they pay live. a retainer <laughs> and then he texts and then you have a date in your calendar and then you all of that and you may, he used to make lots of money doing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's your new business. Yeah. It's Turn a good a idea. problem into a business. It's a good idea, honestly. And I think you can outsource pretty easily to people yeah. working in the Philippines or something You're like actually it. better to have a woman texting other women. You oh, think yeah. You so? Yeah, women know. I mean, like, but like, like novels, you know, like women buy romance novels? Yeah. Those are all written by women. Mm. Like Fifty but Shades of Grey, they know how to like write that a woman gets like, ooh, isn't Fifty Shades of Grey a woman who wrote it? The, Adam, the, are you not up on your Fifty Shades of Grey? I would, I would say it's written by a male. But... No. Well, let me check. I don't think you're right here. Maybe. Fifty Shades of Grey author. No, E.L. James is yeah. a woman. No, women know how to write to women, just like a man would know how to write to a man. You know, it's like. But most uh, dating coaches are men. For, I mean, most dating coaches for men are men. Yeah, I yeah. I have mixed feelings on that. It's kind of like uh, getting 
style advice from a man. You got to go after your target market. I, I do understand. Sometimes men say, don't ask a woman what she wants because she's not going to, they're not going to give you the straight up advice. Eh, I have mixed feelings on that. You know, in general, in life, you should have your mentors be like half male, half female. Your company should be like half male, half female. People argue with me. I'm going nature makes 50% male and 50% female and humans aren't smarter than nature. If you religious God. So I think generally systems are more stable for humans when there's male and female. There's a lot of evidence for that. I mean, the youngest modern billionaire, the only person to ever have a hundred billion by age 36 is Mark Zuckerberg. He had Sheryl Sandberg, like a female, you know, COO running. It was like him and her. Yeah, but I mean, it depends. It's a good mix. It depends the goal. Can't argue with a hundred billion at age 36. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if all the other billionaires did have a... No, not all of Warren, but Warren Buffett became a billionaire at 52. He started at nine. Mm. So maybe he should have had a woman. He had Charlie Munger. He has two men. So I'm just saying, if you look at stat statistics, you could argue both ways. And if you look at biology, it's hard to argue with biology, you know? Why do... Forget the whole modern argument about male or female. Why do humans have sexual reproduction? Why are there males and females? There's a reason. Some species, like ferns or something, there's no male, there's no female. Hmm. So why did humans, why do we need male and female? And the reason is more complex systems, like our humans, we have more powerful brains than a plant. It's too much to try to get everything in one person. So nature splits it. Mm. It's also for other reasons, mutations and stuff, and blah, blah, blah. That's why I have sexual reproduction. But if we just keep it simple, it seems like you couldn't get everything in one species. So if you notice, women have higher estrogen, men have higher testosterone. So you could have just made one human that gives birth, no male, no female. And, but it seems like having a high testosterone and a high estrogen together creates healthier babies. Hmm. So if you think of your business as a baby, men are more, for example, testosterone, the average man has, let's say, I don't know, I tested my cousin once. She had 30 testosterone and I had 1200. So I had 40 times more. So what does testosterone do? It, one of the traits of testosterone is aggression, risk-taking okay women if you test a woman who is giving birth pregnant her estradiol will be 1000 isn't that insane 500 to 1000 a man's estradiol is like 20. so a woman can be 40 times higher in estradiol especially when she's about to give birth so why is the question well in a business do you want to have only risk-taking no like you probably want some people like running your accounting that don't take any risks. <laughs> so I'm not saying you always need a male this and a female that, but in general, I don't think it's a healthy, com I, you know, when I go into a company, I do a lot of consulting for some of the big entrepreneurs that you follow. Number one thing I look at first in their operations, how many women do they have? Because when I see a company that's disorganized, not being run well, it's usually too many men. Men are more like, Men are like dudes that grab a spear and go like conquer on their own. And women, when you have higher, there's something called, there's a few different hormones. One is oxytocin, okay? You can say serotonin also. This makes you get along better in a group. Men are not as group animals as women. So if you have a company as a big group, Men oftentimes form little groups in your company and forget to talk to each other. So your marketing department doesn't talk to your sales department and your sales department is not talking to customer support. Men don't talk as much. Little babies, like a two-year-old boy versus a two-year-old girl. I forget, a woman, a, a girl talks like 10 times more. Men have smaller vocabularies. You know, you ever seen women at Starbucks? They're like... Four women all looking at each other in the eyes. If I go to Starbucks with you, 
and you sit there in a chair and I pull up like this right next to you. And I go, <laughs> 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 I would feel, uh, I would feel uncomfortable. And I just stare, but watch women talk to each yeah, other, stare it's at crazy. each other. So I'm just saying, it's almost like, to me, male and female is almost a different species. Obviously, it's not a different species. So when you're building a company, I think women's brains work differently. And men's brain, and I think is weird to have all one brain working together. Now, you could say maybe military. I could argue against this theory. But let's take military, where it's all men, Right. For sure, humans went for stupid wars with each other. World War II, World War I, it's like fucking one third of the world gets killed because two sets of men are too aggressive. Nobody will give in. France, Germany, Japan, all these. So I don't know. I don't think it's better to have all women, though. I'm not like a feminist where I think women are better than men. I just think natural systems, you need both genders yeah i i agree that i i think uh you know a, a system is gonna work until he finds an efficient solution yes and that's what happened over thousands of years evolution yes. with our species but i also think and i think you believe that as well that uh, we are very different men and women oh, hell which yeah. is not what a lot of people think yes. in the society right now and it's also a, a subject that we've debated a lot on the podcast and so my question is <laughs> When you have someone who thinks that men and women are different because of society, mm -hmm. because when a little girl grows up, her parents buy a princess and a doll, and that uh, in school uh, she learns that most women act this way. Right. And that's the reason why girls are different yes. than men. What are for you the most striking argument or proofs that you used to convince them that it's actually not the case and there is a difference in our body, in our gene, in our brains. Yeah, well, I think test your blood. I've been testing my, I've tested my blood about 40 times in the last seven years. Like I've tested my blood and whenever I'm dating somebody, when I go do my blood test, I'm like, hey, you do your blood too. So women and men are very similar, but on a few hormones, it's crazy difference. Like I told you, my testosterone was 1200. My female cousin was 30. In fact, when she got her results back, I was like, oh, they made a mistake. I was like, you gotta do the blood test again. This must be broken. She calls the doctor. She's like, I gotta do a blood test again. They go, why? She only got, I only got 30 on testosterone and my cousin got, me got 1200. And he's like, no, women have like 30. That's an insane, just that one hormone being different predicts all kinds of life, life incomes, outcomes. So some stuff is environmental. Like, do some boys want to play with dolls? Probably. Do some girls want to play with, you know, cars? Yes, but in general, it's a fact that men care more about things. And women how do care you explain more. that it's from nature and not from the environment? How can Blood you know test. that? But how can you know that the blood is responsible for all of this change in the personality? <laughs> well, I guess you could say I, because blood doesn't lie, man. Blood. No, it's but hormones. we know we know it's different, but we yeah. don't know that it's because of that hormone that girls oh, think differently. For it instance. is because you can you can. I'll give you an example. There's a famous experiment. I forget the guy's name. He said he wanted to know what it was like to be a woman, so he mm. took estrogen shots. Okay. And he said, after he did it for a month, he was walking down the kitchen and he saw the TV and there was like a commercial with a puppy and he started to cry. But he didn't know why he was crying. He just tears started to come down. And so he turned to his wife and he's like, I don't know why I'm crying. And she goes, I do that all the time. So here's something interesting. Have you ever cried, but you don't know why? Not in my memory. Have you? Yes. You've cried with no re for no reason. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. You're the first <laughs> guy to ever say yes. no. <laughs> no, but I, I had the health issue, so I had like very low level of uh, dopamine, serotonin in my brain. Oh, well, there so you I go. Was, yeah. But that shows you. Yeah. So, when your hormones change, your behavior changes. Yeah. And we know that. Forget gender, sex, male, female, sex. I see it on my. I have cows on my farm. The bulls. The male bulls, they want to fight faster. You got to watch out for your, they'll kill you. 
Well, in humans, like 70, 80% of murders, men. So I think it's not just humans, it's other species. But I do think, look, I live in Sweden, which is very part-time, which is feminist. Some stuff is definitely societal. Like, for example, <laughs> I was dating a girl who was Norwegian, and she was visiting America. And in America, usually, you want to go open the car door and open it, which I think is stupid, and I hate it. So I was so happy that I was dating this Norwegian girl. Every time I went to the car, I just went to my side. To her. They think it's weird if you open the door. So I think that's an example where Western, we think, oh, women are so, they need to be open, door open. They don't need the door. That's not in the blood. <laughs> that's not in the blood. That's man-made. That's man yep. So some things about women is man-made. For example, women can be, there's a, I don't know who's more emotional. People say women mm, are more emotional than emotions. men. Yeah, but do men, I'm going to tell you this. Ego, anger. Yeah. Who's the old? Who will spend their whole life building their life, <laughs> then drive a car, somebody cuts in front of them, get out and kill the guy, road rage. We call it road rage. Car rage. Male or female? Male. Okay. Is that logical? You'll spend your whole life trying to build your life. You build a business, success, and then some stranger who doesn't even know who you are cuts you off, and you go out and shoot him or hit him kill them, go to prison for the rest of your life. To me, men can be way more emotional than women because no woman, I've never met a woman who does, jumps out of a car and punch it. Maybe it happened, but I've never seen it. But men, I see men, like you said, guys, I know guys that are making, I don't know, $5 million a year, okay? Profit. And they're totally, I, I, I have a couple, I have some private clients. I have a couple students that are gonna become billionaires soon. One of them's making, I don't know, $50 million after tax profit, let's say. I said to him, uh, I think you need to exercise. He's like, no, I'm making money now. And I'm like, well, I think you should exercise. Well, he had a heart attack and almost died a month after I told him this. And I said, okay, let me get this straight. So you work 15, 16 hours a day and you make $50 million logically, I'm like, you need to go to the gym one hour, right? So I'm like, go down from 16 hours a day to 15 hours and one hour in the gym. And I said, I bet you, you'll still make 50 million. No, he was very illogical. And I said, well, why does money matter if you die? Hmm. Where most women will be like, oh, I make enough, I'll stop. So that's what I'm saying. There's some examples that modern culture says women are super emotional and men aren't. It depends on the subject. Mm. How do you take care of your health personally? I know that Xiaomi does a lot of biohacking protocols and that it's very important for him to like take care of everything. Mm -hmm. Are you into health optimization or not really? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I do jujitsu, I lift weights. Yeah, I, do, I think you should do like, I think the simplest for entrepreneurs, I built like a program called 150 Body. It's like busy entrepreneurs. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, do weights. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, do competitive sport. And then try to get 150 grams of protein. It's like some basic stuff. And most important, try to get 150 minutes of deep sleep every night. If you get 150 minutes of deep sleep, that'll change your life more than anything. But you got to track. I have one of these rings. Yeah. You can get this or Whoop or one of these. How many do you use uh, Aura Ring? I have the Apple Watch. Let me see. What'd you get the last? I'm trying to get the data. Do you have one? I I had the hoop. The uh, now I don't have. What does does it still have the app? Uh no, I I, I the whoop app maybe. Deep sleep, 153 minutes. That's good. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> Was that what, yesterday? Yeah. That's. Uh, let me see the day before. Uh. One hour and six minutes. So does it show you average? Let, let me just, just swipe for like three days. See what's average. So one hour, eight minutes, one hour, 53, and then one hour, six minutes. Yeah. So you're averaging 130. Oh, one hour, 53. Yeah. Okay. So that's not, 
So ideally, you want like two and a half minutes. hours. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's I'm not bad. Okay. Over 100 minutes is important. So your sleep okay. is pretty good, but not amazing. Okay. How many steps do you walk? Not that much, but I train and I run. But how many steps when you run? I run four or five minutes every day. Five? Yeah, only five to wake up. Oh, that's not enough. But then I, I, I go to the gym and I 14,000 steps, man. 15,000. You think it make a big difference? Hell yeah. For your deep sleep? That's not enough. I, I, I thought it said 153 minutes. One okay. hour and 53 is only roughly like 110 minutes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're not, you're probably not moving enough. Do you have a treadmill desk? Yes. Uh, only, I mean, it can go up, but I don't have the, I can't Then that's, no, standing desk Yeah, is standing desk, yeah. Nah. That's the <laughs> biggest scam in biohacking. <laughs> The body does, you know, if people go to a wedding and they stand, they faint. Yeah. Don't stand. Standing's work. Walk. Yeah, I was in the military, so I'm used to standing for it's a long good, time. Man. It's not you, good, man. I'm going to get you, I'll get you a, tre get him a treadmill desk for his birthday. It costs a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try. And then set it low, like on one, do you, are you on your laptop a lot? Yep. Yeah, just set it to like three kilometers. Oh, yeah. And you walk, yeah, so three, you need to walk, yeah, steps is good, 15,000 steps. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, you, because you should be getting deeper, how old are you? 27. Yeah, you should be getting deeper sleep than that. Mm. Too much time on a Do you have, uh, what time do you turn the laptop off? The nine, nine. But when do you fall asleep? Midnight. Do you put blue blocker glasses on? No, but I have the, you know, the orange. Yeah, but you get it all these lights. You need yeah. the blue blockers, man, for like three hours before you sleep. You have blue blockers? Yeah. Yeah. I will get you some. <laughs> yeah. I own 1% of a company. Go to Swanee. Swanick glasses. Those, uh. are, those are the only ones that have a Harvard study that they're actually scientifically proven. Yeah, the, the guy you. who made this... So was in your video a long yeah. time ago james swanick yeah i remember this guy but okay. i but i would but it's not that's not why i'm endorsing them like i yeah. only own one percent i'm not gonna make money if you buy <laughs> but um no hell no that having a pair of glasses but steps is more important man okay yeah well how much steps did you get yesterday i don't know i don't track it but I, On maybe Apple? I go to the health app it's health. built in okay is it like calories that you spend that make a difference in your sleep or is it like no, being outside just, i think you're it's hard to humans men used to walk if you there's a good book called the story of the human body humans by a harvard paleo anthropologist humans used to walk or men would walk around 14 to fifteen thousand steps every day hunting for food women a little bit less like 12 or thirteen thousand. so you try to align like your habits with yes. what we used to do in Ancient. the exactly in the past. So okay. yes, goal is fifteen thousand steps. What did you? What have you had? Like eight? Um, three thousand. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah, three thousand per day on average. You'll optimize. I bet you that one thing will change your life more than anything. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to set up your like like I was supposed to have. So Iman Gazi, I was supposed to have lunch with him. I because of this, I didn't quite do it. But normally. I would have walked to that hotel mm. and I would have walked back. But, and I just do my business call. Do you do a lot of calls for business? No. Yeah, you need to do more phone calls. How many people work for you? Uh, with all the businesses between 15 and 60. Yeah. So you need to be on the, I think phone is an underrated business tool. Like literally I can do business. I'm closing deals. Now, when I close a big business deal, I go in person. But all the operations to get up to there on the phone. You don't have you have a global company, people all over. Yeah. Or are they I'm, just in Dubai? No, no, Dubai, uh, Europe, Africa. You go to the gym. Yeah. How far is your gym from your house? In my uh, tower. No, I'll never do that. Never. <laughs> <laughs> so like yesterday, I was supposed to go to that. What was the name of the gym? Benus. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah, we train there sometimes. So. I was going to walk there from here. The guys thought I was crazy. I'm like, it's only... But in Dubai, it's not nice to walk. Well, no, you're not allowed to walk. Yeah. Dubai is insane. Yeah. You can't walk off this island. They don't let you go through that tunnel. But it's like, it's like an hour and a half walk. 
I would have Uber, a uh, two hour walk, it was a two hour walk. The best is take a Uber to the gym. That's about, let's say eight kilometers away. Work out, don't walk before the gym because then you exhaust and you're not as strong, but walk home, mm. eight kilometers. And what do you do when you walk? You listen to audiobook? Audiobook? You talk or I to have, your like, business oh, partners? Do business deals, call, and then audio. You don't have people recognizing you everywhere? Yeah, Dubai, and nobody sees you. Okay. Are gonna people see you? I mean, walking Dubai is France? fine, but I couldn't do that in France, so I don't know how you do it in the US. Yeah, but in France, where walk on not so busy streets. Yeah. What do you? Don't yeah, I mean, if yeah, if I don't need to go somewhere, I can find a path where it's. I used yeah. to go walk every 30 minutes, uh, every day for 30 minutes. I used to do that. I stopped last week. Why? <laughs> Because my coach told me it's useless. No way! I do not believe. What no, coach no, said no, this? No, no, it's not true. It's not true. We, we, we. You said you're doing five minutes of walking. That's like if I meet a guy, it's like. I'm trying to get my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. I do five minutes a day. I'm like, it's going to take you 300 years to get a black belt in Jiu-Jitsu. You got to put in hours, man. Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, no, five minutes of running. It's, it's just to wake up. It's just I wake up, I run five minutes, so I get like spike. Yeah, and that's like, fine. And then I and then I go to work. Man, it take, I, I don't believe any of that. I think it takes <laughs> three hours a day of movement for your body every day. I've never seen any good sign. Three hours of movement a day. Sure, like you should. Okay, try this system. You're gonna look way. You're gonna be like transform yourself. Okay, yeah. let's see. Do you still? You should be sleeping. I want to see. You need to get this ring. Do you walk? I walk. Yeah, I walk like uh, half an hour every day. Yeah, but that's so little. Half an hour. <laughs> yeah, but I train a lot. I do like boxing, Muay Thai, weightlifting. She'll walk like CrossFit. Yeah, but even then, so, so like weightlifting. I've tr I've hired every ho. I, you know who Dorian Yates was? He won Mr. Olympia five times. These guys are like, if you lift weights right, you can't lift for more than 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever worked out with a Mr. Olympia guy? In 45 minutes, you're dead. So I think you should walk two hours a day and then work out one hour intense. But it's like Muay Thai, you do jujitsu for one hour a day. You do jujitsu or Muay Thai? Muay Thai. Muay Thai is Thai. Yeah, I do Muay Thai too. It's hard also. Jujitsu is more. Really? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Jujitsu? Fuck yeah. yeah. I, Muay Thai is like a nine out of 10 for it's getting It's different time. fatigue. Like no, but jujitsu, another dude's trying to attack. Put it this way. <laughs> you can, I can spar one minute of Muay Thai is like pretty hard. One minute of all out wrestling is fucking, <laughs> come on. I never did jujitsu. Try jujitsu. I Hell cannot yeah. compare. You got to do cross training. All the MMA guys is jujitsu, wrestling, boxing, and Muay Thai. I did so, uh, cross training. Okay. I saw CrossFit. No, no, cross training. Do different. So, like Monday, Monday, try this. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, try weights. But do you have a trainer with you? For weightlifting, no. For boxing, yes. Here's why you need a weight trainer you need somebody that. You should lift heavy enough that you need somebody spotting you for the last one or two reps. Mm. 45 minutes like that, fucking dude, you're 27. My dad was a pro bodybuilder. Like those guys, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I, I asked him his daily routine. I used to go to his house. He has it for his birthday once a year. Like that dude's in good shape. Arnold Schwarzenegger is like 77 or something and looks good. And he would ride his bike. His gym was like 20 kilometers away. It's far. So he would, he, he wakes up at four in the morning. He told me he reads from four to five in the morning. Then he gets on a bike bike and rides to the gym, takes an hour. Then he works out for whatever hour and a half. And then he rides back home by eight in the morning. He's like, yeah. You've always trained. Your whole life or? No, I've done, I've done where I didn't train, just try to make money. I've done that horrible experiment. <laughs> That's a bad experiment. What is your routine? So I think that here's what I think is the simplest routine and most scientific. Wake up for the first hour. Don't do anything, but even stay in bed for one hour. Now, a lot of people argue with this, but. So you should stay in bed for an hour. Or 
like daydream. You know what daydream means? Yeah. Like creative. Like now people will say no. Get out of. So I see like on social media, it's like wake up at three in the morning. Okay, who's the best businessman of the last ten years? Business. Mm-hmm. Let's say Elon, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos says he up at he, night. he's like I wake up at nine. I spend an hour in bed thinking about different ideas. So I think you need a creative hour. So that's one hour. So let's say you wake up at eight, eight to nine. Then I think you should go right in to three hours of work. You're an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. Three hours, there's a book called Deep Work by Cal Newport. You go three hours, crazy focused work. So if you wake up at eight, eight to nine is more relaxed. Nine to 12, insane. Then you, if you do intermittent fasting, like I'll do intermittent fasting, then I'll eat four hours after I wake up. Then take like a 15 minute nap and go to the gym. Go to the gym five hours from after you, that's when you're the strongest, about five hours after you wake up. So mm-hmm. I wake up at eight. So you train 30 minutes after you ate. No, like you eat at 12, it doesn't have to be 30 minutes, but I don't need a huge first meal. Okay. Eat your bigger meal after the gym. So I have like eggs or something, but then I take a nap. There's an old German saying, I'm half German. Germans used to say, after you eat, either take a nap or walk a thousand steps. Mm. So then I take like, I, I do a headspace meditation app. Yeah. You ever use that? Yeah. But I use it to help me fall asleep. Now they tell you, you shouldn't do that, but fuck that. <laughs> nap is the most, pro- I'm like, why? It works. <laughs> so I do the Headspace app for 15 minutes. I fall asleep for five minutes. That five minutes gives you like a one hour. Then right when I wake up, so at one o'clock, I'll take pre-workout on my way to the gym. So let's say I'm at the gym at one or one thirty, work out for an hour and a half, then walk home two hours and do my phone calls. So you should do three hours hardcore on your laptop and that's it. Mm. The rest phone. Don't you think that uh, what are you doing so much on the laptop slack? No, no, I, I can um, um, solve problems, let's say, solve the most important, important problem for my businesses or my life. But what are the problems usually? It really depends. I sometimes I optimize a part of my business or I try to find new businesses to launch or I can do that when you're walking. Um, no, I like to type and structure my thinking on like huh. mind map or a list or something. But I think that routines are really you have an interesting personality type. I need to figure out. You're trying to figure me out. By the end of the podcast, let's let's see what you think. Are you and emotional? The, um, I, I I think I feel emotions strongly, but I try not to act them out if they don't serve my interests. Yeah, but that's but, a different thing. You're like, well, what are you yeah, by uh, nature? You're emotional. I, yeah, I feel strong emotions. Are you I, emotional? Not much. Who's more emotional between you two? I, I am, I think. Let me see. Hold your hand up. Go like this. Are you, put your fingers together. Let me see yours. Are you right or left hand? Right. Right. Are your parents emotional? Um, I'm looking yes. at your, this is estrogen finger, uh, testosterone, estrogen. Yes, my you, you have yes, pretty high testosterone, both of you. That's got, that's when you're born, digit index ratio. But you said you had hormone imbalance. No, yeah, but that, that's over. It's just a health issue. Now it's fixed. And it was just temporary. Yeah, got an operation and took two years to stabilize. But now it's pretty. Are your parents stable. emotional? Uh, my mom, I think yeah, but what my dad, dad, my dad, not at all. He's very cold. Yeah. So he has more psychopath gene. Your yeah. mom has more. <laughs> he says, yeah, right away. <laughs> Is he more that way? Yeah. Yeah, men, much more men have a psychopath gene than women. Yeah. yeah. People call women psychos. Women are not usually psychos. Yeah. They, yeah. They act on their emotions, so they seem psycho sometimes. Yeah. But psycho think, doesn't. No, it's, psycho it's is actually, the opposite of Exactly. Emotion. People don't understand. Yeah. Psycho means. Psycho is crazy. No emotion. No, but no. no it's no ah, empathy. It's no emotion. Psychopath. Like you don't care. Killing someone is not a problem. Please. Yeah, you see a psychopath okay. don't blink. They're like this. Yeah. It's like I ran over this person with my car. 
<laughs> you're like, yo, are you going to express any emotion? I don't. Yeah. You have higher anxiety, huh? Yes. Yeah. That's the main difference I can tell between you. You're anxious. You're not. Do you ever have a hard time sleeping? Not really. I, Where your mind's thinking of everything that could go wrong? No. Do I you? Sleep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I would say that's the main difference between you. High anxiety. And men can have, w women have higher anxiety more often, but men can have high anxiety a lot too. Is yeah. good or bad? Good in what situation? For business, anxiety is good, no? Most successful, very successful entrepreneur have high anxiety, no? I'm not sure it's that simple. I think when you, I think there's more than one way to solve a problem. Yes. So I think there's psychopath, low emotion men. Yep. Who become very wealthy. Yep. But they take this path. You take this path. I think a lot of anxiety comes out of our instinct to raise children. Women have higher anxiety because they raise children. And if you don't pay attention to children, mm. they fall off a cliff. <laughs> so I think anxiety has a lot to do with estradiol. If, if you have you ever done testosterone? like uh, shots no no never. yeah so if, if somebody wanted to do experiment with you if they took <laughs> testosterone and you started sticking it in your taking a hip shot all the time you would become less anxious oh yeah have you tried yeah i've tried i've tried everything you can do you <laughs> for sure oh yeah men go fucking nuts. like that one gym we were at where there's a lot yeah. of people taking testosterone yeah way more likelihood someone's going to punch you in the face if you take their gym equipment <laughs> <laughs> yeah like test it, it i think remember i was talking about 60 percent is out of our control 30 percent is in our control that 60 percent is also just hormones mm. like, shit you can't control that so they did a machine where i ask you to do something of your own free will okay and they track when your conscious mind said to do it and when your un and your unconscious mind tells you what to do a half a second before or a third of a second before your conscious mind. So it's, we're driven by unconscious desires. When I meet entrepreneurs, I remember I had you take that quiz. Like, let me see the quiz again. The results. Um, where is it? You showed me a screenshot. I didn't take a screenshot. Oh, yes. There you go. So let me see. So you got. Can I show this on the thing? Yeah, sure. So you got material things, 56, mating, 64, freedom, 66, mastery, 72. This is on my 12types.com. It's free. I'm going to pitch my quiz. There. <laughs> go ahead. 12types.com. It's going to be in the description. Yeah. Um. So your much more your number one drive is to be respected by people. Mm. So my question is, why I test some people, and that's a twenty. Mm -hmm. So that's what I said. This is genes. Mm. It's like it's not logical. So you're gonna interpret everything you do. Yeah, you're not as materialistic, huh? Mm -mm. Your dream is not to have. <clears throat> what what? How much money would you like to make? Would you like to be a richest person in the world? Probably not, but a billion, yes. Yeah, a because billion. status. Yes. Because in my, like, the most important competition for me is yes. business competition. So yes. it means I succeeded in that competition. But I don't just, care about what I buy with the billion dollars. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, for example, if I said, if I said you'd be on the Forbes list, let me give you a real question. Okay. Which one would you like? Okay. You're on the Forbes list mm -hmm. and you're worth a hundred billion dollars. So not only you're like one of the most respect, you go to conferences, people are like, wow, tell me that. But you only have $1 million liquid. That's it. One Ever? Ever? No, during that year. Let's say it's 10 years of your life. Okay. You're a hundred billion on the Forbes list. Yeah. But it's tied up in real estate. You can't no, that's sell it. Not, not probably. And you have $1 million in your bank account. Okay. And you have enough to do whatever you want. Travel and all. Yeah. Or, and I want to see what your answer is. You have 
a hundred million in the bank account, but your net worth online is one hundred thousand dollars, and you can't tell anybody. Nobody can know. Honestly, I don't really care about uh, the public thing. It's more about how I view myself. Yeah, but which one would you take? Because no status, a hundred grand. Gonna but give I, you I view myself. If I know that the the the, the hundred billion dollar is not fake, I'm gonna have no, it. No, it's, it's not fake. It's, yeah, it's, it's true. Not fake. I really reached this yeah. goal. I prefer this. Yeah. Yes. How about but you? But it's not about oh, people are gonna be like oh, he's your hundred billion. It's more the view I have of myself. Fine. Okay. For me, so that's your conscious mind. Your unconscious mind even deeper <laughs> you than think this. So? <laughs> yeah. People justify their unconscious I'm mind by sure. saying, well, it's because of this. Because what about you, you? Status, yeah, for sure. So you'd rather have a hundred billion, but you only have a million in your bank account. Or you could have a hundred million in your bank account, but you only have a hundred thousand net worth online. Then nobody can know you really have a hundred million. I think uh, it's a hard question, but let me see. Let me see what you got. On I got exactly screen. like uh, Yomi. No, not as high. He got higher. Yeah, on he got higher. Yeah, you got a little bit lower. You got sixty-eight. One of the main. He cares more about love than you. Yeah, you're more like your dad. You're like ah. <laughs> <laughs> love is useless. <laughs> you think so? No. You got the same. You're not super material. No, I'm not material. And he's a little bit more ambitious in general than you. Who? He's? You. Ah, okay. Who do you think's more ambitious? A little bit more. Yeah, I think I think I am, but a little. I, I think I am also. I think I am. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> why we're both driven. You're pretty close though. But I always think it's d interesting. You both you surround yourself with people with very similar. This is the unconscious mind. Mm. So I think that's that's very normal. What about you? I score, I don't score, I'm pretty similar. Really? But you yeah. score higher on freedom, maybe, no? Yeah, higher on freedom, mm. less about status. But it probably makes sense, 10 years ago, when you saw my video, your unconscious mind, they call it assortative matching. We're attracted to people similar. Yeah, similar. This, it's yeah. really, it's very So true. when you saw my video, you're like, I like how this guy thinks, that's, because it's you. You saw yourself, <laughs> exactly, narcissism yeah. of that's, humans. That's There's very something true. about this Thai guy that I like. That's, yeah, it's you in another video. It's <laughs> funny because like, you know, I've always, you know, when you're young, you see people like telling you, you can make money doing that by yes. my course trade my things and always I was like, yeah, this is a scam. When I saw your stuff, yeah. I was like, yeah, usually these things are, are a scam, but this guy is very smart. <laughs> he's right on a lot of things. Maybe he's right on that as well. And that's why I kept on watching yes. your content is because I, you made me realize a lot of things. And now I, it's funny because a lot of things that you've said today, I've said in past podcasts, yeah. so I think we have a similar views yes. on a lot of things and we kind yeah. of think the same way about a lot of subject. And if that wasn't the case, I, w I would not have bought your course. Yeah. So, so happy that, uh, yeah. <laughs> that like when I go to different self help people's, you go to like Tony Robbins. Yeah, he's, he's more emotional. Yeah. He's very into like getting into I went to one of his I love Tony Robbins too. his one of his books changed my life. But I went to one of his conferences and he attracts a lot of people like him. And I went with my best friend and we we're sitting in the back and they're like, everybody just turn to a stranger you don't know. Tell them your traumas of life, cry and hug each other. And I was like, this ain't my crowd, man. <laughs> Me and my friend left in five minutes because but Tony Robbins, because he's into emotional stuff, that's called a self-selected group, SSG. So this table right here is kind of an SSG. We kind of think alike because if I thought completely different than you, you wouldn't invite me on this show. You'd be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> He's an idiot. But, but one thing I will tell you, make sure you read people that are the opposite opinions. So, for example, even though I'm a capitalist, I still read Karl Marx. The Not all the time. But I like to read the other side, like maybe business isn't so good. Maybe the world's worse off. There's some people that believe the world's worse off because you and us three make a lot more money than other people. They think the world would be better if everybody made the same. And even though I don't believe that, once in a while, read that book. It balances out your brain. 
you know that's why i said like on health stuff a lot of people start reading the same health book and it's like if a guy's on testosterone and weight he's just reading weightlifting if a person gets into muay thai they just like Shh, go but yeah. i think it's better to do like jujitsu does a little bit different thing for your body muay thai does a little body so i like i think the healthiest life is to get different opinions yeah usually we like to be right so we yes go toward what's exactly us right but yeah it's good to change our beliefs also and that's what i was saying in science look at evolution how smart it is your mom more emotional was attracted to her opposite that's very common an emotional woman will be attracted to a more let's say Steve not Wilco. psychopath <laughs> no. i'm not saying but your dad's not a criminal psychopath he just has lower yeah. emotion does your who cries more your mom or dad oh yeah who gets sure. more excited your mom or dad you know dad's like Psh. but because of that you create healthier kids and humans over the last 10,000 generations humans are evolving sometimes worse but on some things we're much stronger so i think you have to do that in your own private life you have to be like evolution you say okay I'm a businessman. What's the opposite of business? I don't know. A farm. That's why I have a farm. Like, I get too materialistic. I'm like focused on, but, and then I'm like, ah, let me go to the farm and have cows. It's a good thing. It'd be good for you too if you have high anxiety. Do you yeah, own nature? Any, yeah, do you own any nature stuff? Piece mm, of land? Nope. You should. No real estate? Uh, Where would you rather do flat. it? Switzerland or? Sorry? Switzerland, where would where are you gonna settle down after here. Dubai? Oh, you're gonna settle here for next five years at least. Yeah. What about thirty years from now? No clue. I think the world changed so fast. I don't know what countries are gonna look like in thirty. So if years. the world's the same, where would you live when thirty years from now? Whoa, great question. And you? Um, France. Probably yeah. here. Really? Yep. So you like Dubai that much? Yep. Yeah, what was interesting was I was bringing up the license plate thing and I was like, you're kind of like defending it. And then I no, look at I would your never, I would never. No, no, it. but you said I understand because it has value. It has. It's an investment. Say. I think. It's yeah, it's an investment. investment. Yeah, yeah investment. it's, it's interesting how you. Same it's, with watches. Yeah. But see, to me. Eh, I don't know, but that's just like a judgment call on what is that like. To me, yeah. status is more intelligence. I grew up with like different values. So my grandma, German grandma, she money, she never was impressed that I made money ever. Doesn't care at all. But she liked that I read books mm. and interviewed smart professors. My grandma's like that. So it's funny how even when your motivations, they get interpreted. So for example, if you like status, some people will interpret that as, but me like license plate is actually stupidity. So you're, so if I meet a dude and I find out he spent a million dollars, do you guys have this? Am I insulting you? With no, 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 no. If I find a dude that <laughs> spent a million bucks to get the license plate A, yeah. I want to be like, are you fucking retarded? Like there's something wrong with but you. What if he thinks it's a good investment? Okay, I, first I know off, let, that, okay, but let's be scientific. Yeah. Is there anybody smart? that ever would say the best investment they ever let's go to the top of the forbes list the top 20 people in the world yeah. what do you think they would say about a license plate it's not the worst you think i think it's, it's yeah dubai buying a, a numbers plate in dubai when you see what type of people are coming here they care about status right you see that real estate a problem with dubai's real estate is that there is they 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 uh, make a lot uh, of it. So there's a lot of new construction. So yes. you don't have the squeeze of the offer yes. uh, similar to like New York City or Paris. Yes. So when you invest in real estate, you take the risk that, okay, there's going to be a better building yes. tomorrow. No, plates number, you don't. So if you want, if you think that Dubai is going to keep on growing, you know that people that come in Dubai care about materials, these thing, things. Yeah. Buying a number of space is actually quite a good investment, I think. And also it's fascinating. Yeah, but what does it, who does it bring to you? Let's just go. So no, who, you, so you can sell it later. It's just oh, an investment. you're saying an not investment even put vehicle. it on your car. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, but there's no way that'll be the best investment of a million dollars. It's not, what, I got a text I yesterday I from know. my friend. I, I he's one of the co-founders of Ethereum. Okay. Yeah. 
a million dollars into Ethereum in 2015 will be no, worth no, a no. million now. No. A license plate ain't ever going up that much. I don't know. It, it, if you look at the past three years, I think some some license plate they made like 50x. I know a lot of guys that are using it to do business deals with other yeah, businesses but, in Dubai. But whoever respects that, I don't even want to do business with. <laughs> My brain works the opposite. If I meet somebody and they're like, you know, I wasn't going to do a business deal, but I noticed your car number was A. <laughs> so I'd be like, this guy's not very intelligent. I can just trick him. <laughs> like, I'd rather somebody do. I, see, that's what I'm thinking. I don't think the smartest people can be tricked that way. Like Warren Buffett, best investor of all time. He he. Nobody's in rich in Dubai like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett's in on two hundred billion cash. So I don't know. That's why I said you I don't spend too much time in Dubai. You need to be in Dubai summertime, and you need to get your brain because you're gonna get in that Dubai bubble of like craziness. Yeah. I don't know. For fifty, is there been a fifty x on a license plate? Yeah, probably. But what's the intrinsic value? It can go down to zero. Like with most cryptos. Yeah, well, that's true. That's <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but I'm just saying 50x. So somebody put a million into a license plate and it's worth 50 million. No, more like probably put, a few put one dollar and, and it's worth 50 dollars. And now it's worth a few million or a few hundred. Yeah, the, I think the how much did it sell the last one? Nine million or something like that. The highest one sold was like $9 million a few months ago. So the guy who sold it probably bought it, I don't know, a few uh, tens of thousands of dollars. Let me tell you one thing that I've learned about the world. There's a lot of money laundering in this world. Mm. So people will, this piece of art right there where somebody scribbles sells for $100 million. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it sells for $100 million? Because mm. somebody had $100 million in some country and they needed to get rid of that money. So they <laughs> they wired a hundred million for the painting, and then the guy gives some of it back to him. There's yeah. Uh, you you care a lot uh, about personality types of people you meet. Something that I found interesting when I meet people is trying to assess how much of a conspiracy theorist they are. You know, on a scale of zero to ten. But I'm not a conspiracy. No, no, that, that's yeah. that's my question. Yeah. Um, because some people are zero, they believe yeah. everything the government, right. the media, uh, the doctors say, and some yeah. people are hundred, they never believe anything yes. that is official. That's my mom. Where do you think you are on the scale and what kind of things you believe are conspiracy theories are wrong and which kind you think are true or might be true? Well, I, I think I'm probably a 50 or maybe a 40. I'm not that high. I mean, so I'll tell you where I think conspiracy theories are usually true, where there's a lot of money and not free information flow. So for example, pharmaceutical stuff, there's a lot of true conspiracies there. Whatever happened with COVID, I moved to Sweden, so I didn't have to get vaccine and I didn't, you know, Sweden, it was against the law to wear a mask. Mm. So I thought that was an insane reaction because you don't want to be taking any vaccine that was created with oper Donald Trump called it Operation Warp Speed. That means super fast. I'm like, I don't want any vaccine that's developed in 30 days. I mean, that's crazy. But then there was a lot of money in pharmaceuticals. So those are not really conspiracy theories to me. Jeffrey Epstein probably didn't kill himself. But other conspiracy, I'll tell you the conspiracy theories I don't think are true. I My mom believed she's 100 out of 100 of conspiracy. My mom never met a conspiracy theory she doesn't believe in. All of them. Like, you go to Wikipedia, it's like chemtrails from airplanes. My mom's like, they're changing the weather. Like, every single one. And my mom believes kind of that there's these rich guys in the world that all get together and agree on things. Now, maybe the WEF, I don't know enough about the World Economic Forum, but one thing I know for a fact is most rich guys have huge egos and they don't like each other. Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos don't talk. The richest guy, two of the, I won't say their names, but two of the richest guys on the Forbes list, they hate each other. If you bring up one guy's name, they're like, so the thought that they're all getting together in a room and manipulating the world, hell no. Too much ego. So I don't believe that theory. What's the theory you believe? I'll tell you if I believe it. Men on the moon. Oh, you mean, man. You believe it's not true? 
so have we ever been or just the first one was fake yeah there was a lot of video footage that are curious honestly yeah if you review with them and also now they are trying to go and seeing how long it takes to go for real and how much time it takes to go yeah uh to prepare the mission and everything doing that a long time ago is not very realistic for me so it was just to keep up with russia we we lied america lied or something yeah, that I one. Know, I don't, I don't really believe this one. Uh, I, I think it's. it's but true. don't believe politicians. Yeah. Politicians. Politicians attract the worst people. Yeah, I think they probably killed Kennedy. Yeah, for sure. Kennedy got shot. There was no way. Have you ever seen uh, Oliver Stone's movie JFK? Uh, I think you a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember very well. Any t- I'll tell you where I believe a conspiracy. It's like a guy does something, then he's assassinated five days later and then the guy who did the assassinating is also assassinated that's what happened with jfk mm-hmm. it's like jfk was assassinated by what was his name uh oswald and then like the next day oswald was assassinated by jack ruby that's probably that's like genghis khan genghis khan went he was buried and everybody who buried him they didn't he didn't want people to know where he lived he killed all the people who buried him they were killed. I mean, he didn't. He was dead. Mm. And then all the people that killed the people were also <laughs> killed. So no one knows where Genghis Khan was buried. Oh. So Why didn't he want people to know? It where was a, It's like uh, a spiritual thing. If people know where you're buried, they can des- destroy your body, desecrate yeah. your body. I, I think when I look at conspiracy theories, I always look at what's the motive. Yeah. And if there is a good motive, yeah. if people can make a lot of money lot with of money. or yeah, get a, something... Then it might be yes. possible. Another thing I look at is do the people that do it have an interest of the event you think is right. a conspiracy being known? Yeah, yeah. Most of the time when you're doing something shady, you don't want people to to have a look at it. Yes. Yeah. And the problem with people that believe a lot in conspiracy theories is they always build one against something that took a lot of attention. Yes. The moon. Yes. World Trade Center, yes. assassination. So they always take a big event that is like everywhere yeah. and they think people organized it yes. for a weird reason. But if I'm doing something shady, I, I have n- I'm never going to take a strategy that is like, yes. take a lot of people knowing it because then you have at the risk of getting caught. Yes, that's like George Bush blowing up 9-11, the towers. He would have had to tell 150 people. Mm. It's called the cartel effect. One person would have defected and wrote a book about it. Yeah. Or they would have recorded him under the table. Like, oh, what do you want me to do, George Bush? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I want you to blow up the thing. And then they would take that tape recording and sell yeah. it for $10 million. Yeah. So you got to look at the profit motive that the defectors could have had. So like NASA, the only problem, a lot of people work for NASA. You would have had to have a thousand scientists all lie. It's hard to get a thousand people to lie for you. But the thing is also, when I was younger, I was, I, I was you very like low on that scale. No, no, oh. uh, opposite. I used to really not believe in them. And uh, the older I get, the more I believe yes. in them. Because I also think that, you know, confirmation bias is very strong. Yeah. So if you don't believe in the conspiracy theory, even if someone that works at NASA yeah. says, oh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I, I tricked it. I was part yeah. of it. You're going you're gonna to say, yeah, oh, he's he just wants to get theory. views, yeah, you yeah. know. So it's it's kind of hard to figure out the truth sometimes, you know? For sure. Jerry, I'd like to go through a list. I once tried to go through and be like, which ones don't you believe in? <laughs> I think it's all of them. She has a couple. She, yeah, like the chemtrail one. Have you seen that one where they're changing the weather by airplanes? They're yeah. leaving streaks in the air. Yeah. My question is, who's doing that and how do they make any money? Yeah, that seems hard to make money. So the motive's not as strong. It also takes a crazy amount of money to change the weather. My mom thinks my mom blames a lot of stuff on Bill Gates. So she can't figure out the motive. She's like, it's Bill Gates. <laughs> Who knows, man? Bill Gates has not done good image control. Like people hate Bill Gates. Yeah. Do you believe in the aliens? Aliens. I just did a whole podcast on this big aliens thing. Um, which version of it? Not the ones you see in movies. I I think that, um, humans were probably the aliens. I don't know. 
I, I think it's possible. I, I more likely believe in multi-universes. And in our universe, it seems like there's no aliens right now. But Stephen Hawking, in one of his books, he talks about like matter and antimatter, it's called. So one of the things people say about aliens is there has to be aliens because there's so much space. Mm. But he says the creation, the Big Bang of the universe, cre there had to be space to offset all the matter, the concentrated energy and matter that there is. So there's a possibility that the, all that empty space is literally nothing. It's just, it shows how, like E equals MC squared. That's like energy equals mass. So it's very improbable that we are the only living thing in the universe. Yeah, but though, maybe, because... maybe, but there could be, I think it's more probable that life is a stim simulation. Yeah. I it's more so. probable that there's yeah. a video game so that the aliens, maybe it's us a thousand years from now. Think of how more advanced AI, AI by 2026 in two years, they say it'll be 800 times more powerful. So now that's in two years. How strong will AI be in 40 years? It might be 1 billion percent. If you keep compounding, it could be more. And if we're a billion times more advanced, what couldn't you create? I mean, you, you look at time travel, time warp, create other universes. Yeah. You look at GTA, you put a uh, chat GPT yeah. inside every character and it looks a lot like the world, huh? Yeah. And then it's so good that we think it's real. And then the question is, am I, maybe this universe I'm in, I'm the only real one and you're yeah. not real. But you would have that same interpretation yeah. of me. Yeah. So I think a lot of those multiverse theories are very powerful because it's like once quantum physics came in, it also ma it makes, it explains why religion can feel true like praying people who pray sometimes get results and people who have power positive thinking get i've had it in my life where you manifest something so it could be there's a lot of parallel universes and you just quickly without knowing it you move into another universe where you're more successful or if you think about horrible things you step into one where everything's you create your own hell so even scientifically some of these things it's the problem is it's too we weren't given brains strong enough to understand time travel yeah. warp being multi-universe so there's only a few people that like i said the thought that there's one to the 500 power 10 universes, to the 500 all right, 10 to, yeah. to the 500 yeah how big is that number yeah if you'd lose uh, everything everything that you've built from the beginning of your career and you had to start from zero again, what would you do to rebuild it back up? You only have your knowledge. No so personal if I was, brand, yeah. no money, no contacts. If you're broke, broke, broke. If you're homeless, learn phone sales or in-person sales. That's the quickest way to get to six figures. Then once you have a little momentum, $10,000 in the bank, then I like service-based businesses. And then I like, I, like, I, I kind of say, if you completely have nothing, sales then you kind of move up to product or sales service, service product and then Brands. the final yeah i mean Deals. you can introduce brand but holding company is the final frontier but i think it's one of those ones where if you're here you could launch products i've seen people that are completely broke launch products Service is the 60% of the economy, so there's so much opportunity, yeah. right? Products are not 60% of the economy. And the U.S. economy is like 60 plus percent services. So services is like guaranteed money, but services reach a limit. Hard to scale. Yeah, you can scale. I mean, look, SMMA, Social Media Marketing Agency, not many people scale past a million bucks a year. But there's a lot of people who do 300,000 to a million. But then if you get into product, you can go product into the billions, you know, e-com like you do and stuff like that. But um, but even there, you get a limitation if you have to start the companies yourself. So if you look, I like to, like I said, for education, I think you can use the Forbes list as the best business teacher. If you just stare at it, what do the top 50 people have in common? Technology, 80% of the current 10 wealthiest people in the world did it with software. 
Mm. So it's like the number one thing that has a chance of creating crazy wealth is software. In fact, it's almost impossible now not to do it with software. So you have to learn software. It's good you're in software. Um, the bottom of the Forbes list is a lot of real estate. Mm. But no one on the top is from real estate. That's another thing. So real estate actually plateaus. plateaus too. Because real estate, you have to acquire one property at a time. Where with technology, if you build Facebook, a billion people can sign up in one day. You don't have to do a billion transactions. So real estate is pretty big. It's created the most millionaires, but it doesn't create decabillionaires. You know, there's a yeah. lot of people with 100 million to a billion net worth from real estate, but not that many that go past that. But with tech, it's like there's 30, how many people are there? Seven people under 30 that are self-made billionaires, you know? Under 30, I think there's only seven self-made. Maybe that, no, something around that. So there's like, you know, the founder of Snapchat was one, okay. you know? So a lot of them are from software. There's a couple, I think the majority. You also have um, crypto made some of them, <laughs> but that's crypto software. Mm. People don't realize crypto is software. That's why I tell people crypto is good, but if there's ever a nuclear strike and the power grid goes out, crypto ain't worth nothing. You wanna have some <laughs> gold, gold or real estate or a cow or something. People, yeah. for, it's funny how many people forget crypto software. Yeah. Um, what about uh, your opinion on uh, Andrew Tate? Uh, Andrew he Tate. Yeah, he created yeah. a lot of debates yeah. in society, a lot of contrast. I mean, he's a smart guy. Look, I, I always say, anybody, if you ask me, you were talking about Hermosi or Tate or people ask me a hundred names, what I think. To get to the top, it's hard. So if you're at the top of something, you're good at the 30% that I was talking about. But there's still the 60% <laughs> that throws. So I think that um, I think you should listen to some people that have new money, but not everybody. Because sometimes the one problem in the modern world is now social media. And this has nothing to do with Andrew Tate. But just anybody who's persuasive can get a lot of people listening to him and knows how to hack the algorithm. Some of that's good. It's harder for the mass media to control stories like they used to. Mass media was a problem for the last 500 years. You know, they told a lot of lies, didn't tell the. So now you have that offset with social media. Anybody can tell a story. Andrew Tate, you know, was a master of virality. The downside of it is um, sometimes good ideas aren't viral, you know? That's a problem. That's not an Andrew Tate problem. That's not a hormone. So I've had to walk that line too because I've been in that same place where it's like, do I say what's viral or do I say what's boring? And true. And true. Exactly. Or That's more likely to be true. But Andrew, I'll tell you one thing about Andrew Tate. He's a super, he's, he's a great speaker. Yeah. In general now, people that do the best, I actually think that's not new. I think for the last thousand years, the best speakers have done the best. I mean, if you look at from Roman Empire, Caesar, for Plato, you Socrates, talking about, they're great speakers. You're talking about Napoleon before. Yeah. When I watched the movie, something that really yes. uh, angered me is like, he's like not charismatic at all. Yeah, but that wasn't well. a good movie. And that's the, I was like, there is no way this no. is true. If there is one skill that Napoleon yes. should have had, is that he's good at motivating people, yes. influencing, charismatic. Oh, he was great. Great yes. at talking. I Google it. He's great at talking. It, that's what they say. But in the movie, I don't know why. No, they made it. Well, that movie, it, yeah. they also made it seem like he just followed this woman around. That's all. That's not yeah. true. No. So I, th I think, you know, Andrew Tate is a guy. It's uh, These are complicated now because some of the message that he says is very true. Mm but people don't want to accept it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, and you have to be careful. Like I've been in that place where him, it's like, do I say it even though you might get killed, taken off, you know, attacked? So the whole thing, you know, he talks about matrix attacks and all that. Use whatever word you want. There, 
it you have to be careful of being too early with messages. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you, people get too early with messages, you get either killed or so. I so I think there's some truth to that. Do I agree with everything that Andrew Tate says? No. There's no way. There's no possibility that one man can be 100% right when you talk about 20 subjects. Yeah, come on. Like, you talk about 100 subjects, you think there's ever been a human that was accurate on... In fact, in 100 years, everything we think is true, our grandkids will laugh at us. Mm. Everything. Like, the stuff we're so sure about right now, in 100... I mean, what do we think is true from 100 years ago? From the year, let's say, 1920. They barely knew about... They barely People barely knew about washing their hands 150 years ago. 150 years from now, people are going to look back and be like, oh, Ty thought that, you know, happiness was 60% yeah. genetic. They, I have a feel. My guess is they'll be like, they didn't know it was 98% <laughs> genetic. <laughs> yeah, you but, there's, but there's a chance they say, oh, there's genes are fake and it's, you know. So that's why I said you have to have conviction in life to survive. But also remember, most of our convictions will be a joke, even in 30 years. Yep. I think people will look at our iPhones, our podcasts. So when you ask me about Andrew Tate, it's like people are like, do you think this guy? Nobody's a god. Nobody's right about everything. And, and I've always been a big fan of having at least like 15 mentors. It keeps you from getting too addicted to one person. You know, so if you have, I divide, you know, to me, life is the good life, health, wealth, love, happiness. So you have four main categories. So you need about four mentors in each one. So health, you should have like four people you listen to, not one. Hmm. Wealth, four people, for sure. Wealth, wealth is the most complicated in many ways. Love, you need four mentors, happiness. So, you know, Andrew Tate, for people who like that, he can be one of the 15. Or mostly can be one of your 15. But be very careful when you get like, oh, these are the two people I listen to. When, <laughs> Bad odds. When you think in general, not social media yeah. in general, like who do you think is like underrated and who do you think oh. is overrated? You mean in the, but not social media Just influencers? Just great people, you know, in life. Author, entrepreneurs, well, celebrities. The most underrated Sigmund Freud, for I would bet, if I had to be a betting man, <laughs> and I ask AI in 10 years, Sigmund Freud, because people don't understand what he said. So I'd say he's underrated. I'd say Dr. David Buss is underrated. I would say, um, you know, when it comes to physical health, I, I told you this guy that wrote the book Story of the Human Body, his name's Daniel Lieberman. He's very under. I nobody ever quotes that guy except me. But he studied, he's an expert on our, our skeletal system for the last 10,000 years. So he basically can tell you how many steps you should walk based on how our hips have changed over the last 10,000 generations. So it's like, oh, humans, like gorillas, they have their, I forget how it is, their hips are turned in. So that's why they walk funny. They're not built to walk. And you can tell by how our hips change how much humans are meant to walk. So I think people like that, I think there's a mentor I have named Dr. Helen Fisher. She's super underrated on the subject of love and sex, which is a lot of what people are talking about now on social media. Nobody ever quotes Dr. Helen Fisher. Well, she might be the number one expert on love. And she's also the chief scientist for Tinder. So she has the most data of any scientist in human history. She can tell you the patterns. Okay. Because everybody talks about like, oh, 20% of the men get all the way, all the alpha. She can tell you. She, and I talked to her. She's one of my mentors. She has like some of the stuff she would agree with Andrew Tate. But some of the stuff she'd be like, mm, it's more like this. So well, here's what I feel like the world's become. This is the underrated thing of the world. The world's become very much like, okay, one group is like men and women are totally different. Men are alphas and women are submit or whatever and then there's the other side which is the extreme left which is you know men and women are exactly the same everything's in societal but if you talk to someone like helen fisher she's like over there she has like weird theories that are probably true like i'll give you an example 
you know, she says, we all think that divorce rate means the world's getting worse. But what she actually says is she thinks we're going back to, so the way that, you know, evolution goes, you had, we lived in caves, maybe you could say, hunter-gatherer tribes. Then we had agriculture. That's 15,000 years ago. All of our current thinking is about this period. That's where a man married a woman, okay? But this tribal thing, she thinks we're going back to the tribal thing, which is actually better. So like Nelson Mandela, you know Nelson Mandela? He yeah. won a Nobel Peace Prize. If you, I read his autobiography, but I was telling you, read the words of these people. He was married and his mom, his dad had five wives or four, five, I think five. And his dad would spend one week with this family, one week with this family, one week. Then he'd come spend one week at their family. They were separate. Nelson Mandela turned out fine. Won Nobel Prize, Peace Prize. So in Western culture, which is more based on the agricultural time, we think like this is exactly what's normal. Well, the tribal way is probably even more normal. But what Helen Fisher says, for example, is when she used to go live with tribes in, in Brazil, some women are more promiscuous. It's not just because of OnlyFans. We think like, oh, women used to not. She said she was at one tribe, I think the Ashe tribe in the Brazilian rainforest or, or Indonesia or uh, somewhere. And she goes, they, one woman had 18 lovers at the same time. No OnlyFans. No, this is like, and yes, men are more promiscuous than women, but some women just genetically are more promiscuous. So the thought that like it's not it's blurry. So I'm just saying now we're 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 becoming very right and left, but the answer sometimes is over there. That's what I was saying. Wealth is good, work hard, you make your own luck. Then over here, you have people saying, you know, capitalism is horrible, rich people are bad. The truth is probably over there. That's why I have weird theories like 60, 30, 10. It's like I don't fit in in either group sometimes. Yeah. Because I, if I go over in the entrepreneur group, they hate that message because it's 60% is outside of your control. They don't want to fucking hear that. It's one of my least popular messages. <laughs> but like I'll do it in a big crowd and like I look at the crowd and like nobody's <laughs> clapping. So I switch the subject to something else and everybody's like, yeah. But I just see people are like, uh, but they want to, it's like, confirmation bias so they want to like me yeah so they're not booing yeah because like ties an entrepreneur okay but, but he's saying some stuff that was a weird to us and then so i just changed the subject and then everybody's like yeah by the end <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I've, i i struggle with the same thing you know do i say this the interesting thing or what i believe is the truth yes and also i think where you can sport spot smart people often is they are able to have Nuance, can we say that? In yeah, English? nuance. nuance. Yeah. Like, and people want you to be like very straightforward yes. and really com very uh, believe in one thing and yes. be very sure of it. And the truth is never like that. Yes. So you want to be more nuanced. Sometimes you agree with the right, sometimes yes. you agree with the left. Yes. And uh, it's it's hard when you're trying to get a, a brand and trying yes. to get attention. It's not good for your brand. It doesn't work. Yeah. But you know what it does do? It changes your brand. Higher IQ people like yeah. that. Yeah. It's kind of like the story of capitalism versus socialism. I just did a debate. Communist, capitalist. I was one of the capitalists. But even on that group, I had to say, well, I do live part time in Sweden or, or Denmark, let's say. And they have a pretty good culture. Like you go to America or you go to Denmark. I mean, Denmark has a lot of good stuff mm. and they have high taxes and they have more socialism and you're not supposed to show off. Like, you can't have, I came over here with, like I said, Iman, they picked me up in the uh, Phantom. I was like, oh, you can't have this in Copenhagen. All girls will think you're a douchebag. If you roll up in a Phantom Rolls Royce in Scandinavia, girls will be like, who is this weirdo? <laughs> so, is that better for a guy? Like, now it's very much that if you're on, the, if you're on this side of the debate, it's kind of like, men should be men, women should be women doing traditional roles. Feminism's bad, but I've been to some places where it's not so bad. Mm. It's a complicated conversation. Are you a competitive person? 
Yeah, but you like challenge. Much, yeah, but not as much as most entrepreneurs. That's the one difference. Yeah, I have a small challenge for you. Okay. Uh, so I've heard you tell in a previous podcast that you're very good at reading people. Okay. Most of the people that watch the podcast have watched, I don't know, between 10 and 40 episodes. Okay. So I think they know us yes. pretty well. You've had uh, two hours yes. to get to know us. How do you think we are, if you had to guess our personality? Personality yeah. types? Which one? Myers-Briggs? No. The letters? Like, if you're trying to describe my personality, how I act, how I am, and him. Mm. What do you think? Well, I would, like I said, the biggest difference between you is you have anxiety and you don't. That is one I can tell. Um, like I said, I guess that you have, I'm like, you probably have a psychopath dad. There ain't no way you have two emotional parents. You have <laughs> that. be happy because he's watching or so. Oh, he's watching? <laughs> yeah. Is he going to be mad at me? No, I don't uh, think so. Not psychopathic, <laughs> just low emotion. Um, well, I would say, like I said, that it'd be interesting to see. I don't think you're, so you're French. French often score high Machiavellian. Yeah, but, okay, but you speak French. French part, French culture. You have some, if you speak the language ever. But I don't think you're very Machiavellian. So probably higher on narcissism, lower on Machiavellian. Have you done your narcissism score? A long time ago, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, not not super high, but they put, you didn't pull up. You never did my quiz? I did. Let me see. The uh, one you took a yeah, long time ago. Yeah, okay. but okay. Let's see. Do you change a lot with these quizzes or no. you, stay, you stay mostly the same? No, that like if I take it 10 years from now, it's you shouldn't very change different. much. Okay. Unless you're tricking, trying to trick yourself. So uh what's what's the name it's uh life compass yeah but i have it all of in french um yeah, yeah. what's the top so score score 100 in feeling like i'm owed something kind of no no, no go I, go to the top you're reading the second first screenshot so narcissistic uh score 80 out of 100. yeah hi i guessed it <laughs> 80 out of 100 is very high now, okay. but let's see in the subset. You probably have high superiority authority. Authority 100. Yeah. I, what is that? You think your ideas are right. Yeah, I do. Does he think he's right a lot? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen to advice. <laughs> you know what? You, you blink a certain way where I think you listen to me more than most people, but it's even hard for you to listen to me. So I can't imagine what it's like. I have a oh, lot of credibility okay. with you. Okay. So imagine a person off the street who disagrees with you. Yeah. You're going to be like, yeah, very probably, friendly. Probably. who is this idiot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, there's a certain way when people disagree with you, they blink slower. And, um, okay. and like I said, I have more credibility with you because you've watched me for a long time and da da da. But it's hard sometimes even for you to agree with me. You're more of a poker face. You you play poker? Uh, I used to when oh, I was. Uh, you be good poker. Maybe yeah. Why'd you stop? Uh, I don't know. Bored? Yeah. Just one thing, and then they tried another one. Yeah, you're probably high dopamine too. You both are high. I have another quiz on twelve types. The career you probably are both very dopamine driven. So that's why you're not super materialistic. You're not driven by one thing. Like a super materialistic person is like, when I get this much money, and like you said, you weren't, when you made a million in one day, I wasn't that happy. Because you're not that much driven. You're more driven by the new experience. So that's interesting you said that. You probably would be good at poker, but you're so dopamine driven. You're like, okay, I started winning at this. Ah. Yeah, I like, like focus. I like to try new things all the time. Who stays with one woman longer? Uh, I do. Yeah. Do you fall out of love faster? Uh, I don't know how fast you fall in love, but maybe yes. <laughs> no, out of love. Uh, out of love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I get yeah. bored very yeah. fast. <laughs> <laughs> I get bored very, very fast. High dopamine, you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wake up sometimes and be like, why am I with this person? Yeah. Yeah. But I can stay focused for a long period on the same thing. Yeah, because you're I, more I, sentimental. But I mean, even in business. Yeah, you you might have so there's a the well the quiz gives you the four homo, hormones that are dominant yep. for your career. You're probably higher 
in things like serotonin, which yeah. is like structure. Cause you said yeah. you like to sit on your laptop and like draw out a diagram. That's serotonin and you do software. Do you like the software side as much? Uh, not no. much. Yeah. I'm not really into it. Yeah. What do you like? What's your favorite part of business? Uh, I like sales. Um, yeah. I like creating content. Um, that these are my two favorites. Yeah. Yeah, you're not as oriented around. You don't like like building a flow chart or something like that. No, but you really like much. that. Yeah, if it's useful, yes. Yeah. 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 You you know the one I like thing, process. I created this quiz. The interesting thing we didn't. I'll have you take it another time. But one of my quizzes, the big problem with ninety nine percent of quiz, personality quizzes in the world is they forget risk tolerance is the one of the biggest differentiator between humans. Hmm. So let me ask you, I'll ask you a few questions that are on there. I built the quiz, so I know what to ask. Have you, after age 12, did you ever get in a fight, fist fight with anybody? Yes. How often? How many times? Uh, like not boxing, right? Uh, no, no, like yeah. mad, like street on the... Three. Don't know. Maybe no. five. Not really. Well, who's a higher risk taker between you two? I Probably think me. He is, yeah. Who started the business? Are you in the business no, together? We no, we each have our own business. But the podcast? I we started, do it. Yeah, yeah started. I started and you joined after. That's what I would guess. You might be a higher risk taker. Okay. What makes you think he's a higher risk taker? I think I'm, I'm low on risk compared to most no. entrepreneurs. No way. Yeah. How? So for instance, now I like, I want to start a new business since two years. Because yeah. I feel like I need a new business to really keep on growing, uh, and I've all of the ideas I have, I don't take them because I'm like, oh, no, but I that's, don't want to I spend my time with and waste some time, and I feel like I don't want to. I know I have something working now, so yeah, if but I that's focus, something else. You have okay. status, which is your core driver. So by switching, you could lose. This could go down in status. I think so you're it's high taking risk. a risk. No, no, be, yes, but so you're not a hundred risk taker. If you were a hundred out of a hundred, mm. you'd be like, I don't even care about my stats, but I bet you're higher than him. That was trying to do comparative. Mm. And I was saying, you've been in more fist fights. That's a very indicative one of, of aggression. But all the time they atta people attack me. I've never started a fight in my life ever. Why are you getting attacked so often? I don't know. People <laughs> think I'm someone else. I don't know. It's, yeah. <laughs> It happens. What do you mean people it, think it you're someone else? It happens. When I was younger, I have a, a scar here and one here. Uh, Both times from people thinking you're somebody else? No, it's the, same, it's the same time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going out of a nightclub and uh, a guy touched the butt of a girl and he was mixed race, tall, dressed in black. And uh, <laughs> I, I was also dressed in black and I went out of the nightclub and three guys jumped me out of nowhere. I don't know Fate. why. Huh? Fate. Fate, yeah. Luck yeah, outside luck. of your control. Yeah. <laughs> but what about the other two times? Uh, one time some guy pushed me again. I was alone. Uh, three guys again tried to fight me. Uh, <laughs> um, other time friends pushed me. I mean, fight between lots of people. Some guy tried to fight me as well. Uh, that's the three times I really remember. But I think there might be a few... One or two other times. <laughs> More wrong. I've, I've never started a fight in my life. I, I'm not yeah. aggressive. Like Yeah. But here's what I would say. The thing that I built in my quiz that I've never seen anybody else do, most quizzes tell you this is your type. What I find with humans is that we actually have two forces usually in us that are opposite. So I was saying for you, you have a risk-taking side. Mm -hmm. You started this podcast. You built a personal brand in France. That's a big, that's like car. It's not just risk taking. You'll do it first. Does anyone else do it before not you at your scale? scale. No, yeah. Not so, okay. So you're a pioneer, but you have a other parts of you. Human brain is very, even look at our brain. We have opposite systems. You have like the brainstem, the cerebellum, mm. med medulla, all this, and you, then you have the medium prefrontal. These go to war against each other. Mm -hmm. Medium prefrontal cortex is being logical. This brain is freaking out. This one's telling you. So even it's like humans are built to be almost at war with themselves. So there's another part of you that cares about status, reputation. 
Even maybe the anxiety also. That yeah, but but the anxiety it. acts to reinforce your motivators, which is I want to be well known. So this is what I was saying to you. You're saying, well, if I was higher risk, I would stop and start a new business and not care about. But that's not risk taking. That's motivation. You want to be respected and famous and you have the perfect business for it. So your risk taking can't override that. They're like you're at war with yourself. Hmm. And I, I don't think I think that's how humans are built. So there's the same with me. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to do something new. But then there's another force in me that says, but that'll override this goal you have. So humans have like if you look at yours out of the four M's of motivation, you have two core freedom movement to do what you want. But a little bit higher is status. So you want, there's a part of you that wants to be able to start this new business. Mm -hmm. But slightly more than that, you like having the respect of the current business. It's, so you're a little bit at, you're a little bit of a prisoner of your own motivations. Yes. I think a it's, lot of people get like that. Yeah. What do you think about him? I haven't talked to you as much, but I mean, I feel like you're, what is your main business? Uh, I help coaches and consultants start or scale their business. How long have you been doing it? Uh, very recent. Before I used to be in fitness coaching. Okay. So now five months. Oh, so it's super new. Yeah, super new. I told you, you strike me as a dopamine person. Even what you were talking about, dating. Who dates more people before they choose one? Uh, you, I think. Probably me, yeah. Yeah. Even the little things you said, like, oh, I started poker. I would probably be good at it, but I did that. And now you're doing a new business. I think you're more dopamine driven. He's more serotonin. Maybe you don't have as many. Some people, I believe, are born with, it's just, a, in a way, a tougher life. You're born with, I think there's some people who have three different, I think Elon Musk is a guy with like mm. two or three parts of himself at war with each other. That's mm. why he's not happy. Mm. So he's obviously, dopamine driven because he keeps starting new businesses yeah it's like spacex tesla what's the starlink Neuralink, boring company open solar AI. city what what's that? open ai open ai bought tech bought twitter yeah but he's also structure based which means he's good at building tech his first business was a map his second business was paypal but he's also very high in cortisol. That's yeah. what you might be. Because in my system, 12 types, he's also a social justice advocate. So for him, he's like, I bought Twitter because the media is unfair and I had to free the media. So he sees himself as like a civil rights leader. So he's three people in one. And I've never met somebody that's four. He doesn't have the fourth one. The fourth one is a people person, although he kind of does because I used to see him. I used to talk to him a lot in L.A. He would go to every celebrity event, mm. movie screenings, this, that. I sat next. I'm like, I kept seeing him. But like when I would go out in L.A., I was like, he's at every. So he's a little bit oxytocin driven with people, but that's his hardest one. If you read like his wife says he has a hard time feeling emotions. So he's like three things at war. If you had all four, I don't. maybe people commit suicide. Maybe that's why you don't find people like that. If you have too many systems at war with each other. So imagine you have like people interests and you're a tech person. And your cortisol and think everything a conspiracy. He's a little more conspiracy. And you're driven by dopamine. I think you'll blow yourself, your brain just. So I think most people are two people. You know, I think you're structure based. That's why you can build tech. You are cortisol based. That's where the anxiety comes from. And that's why you're becoming more of a, of a conspiracy theorist. And then are you socially driven? I don't know if that's do yeah, you. What do you mean by that? Like, do you if you go to visit somebody, yeah. a friend at this bar and he says he's going to meet you at 8 p.m. and you get to the bar, it's busy and your friend's not there and he calls you and says, I'm going to be late. I'll be there at 11. Will you sit around and just make friends? No. No. You're not that social. You're but there for I, a purpose. Yeah, but if, if I go out, I easily talk to everyone. 
if I if you, there's a new group, I'm gonna get to know everyone. But yeah, I'm but, not is, gonna it, talk but to is it for no purpose or for a purpose? <laughs> it might be a yeah, purpose. Maybe, you're like gonna meet yeah, the friends. You're gonna probably. network. You're gonna identify who's a better entrepreneur. There's who can make connections with status. You yeah. probably because you're status focused. You probably try to figure out in the group who's higher status. Do you ever ask not what you, you never ask guys what you do for a living? I do, but. I, I I can talk to I don't know a waiter as much uh, maybe not as much but I I also take interest I like cool people like I don't I I prefer to talk to the cool waiter than the boring entrepreneur if I'm at a party let's say you have a small circle of friends yes I do are they mostly successful entrepreneurs mostly yeah but not only so you have to look at your behavior. <laughs> the story people tell themselves and then you're like wait are all your friends entrepreneurs not yes. only it's like it's a good mix no first you said it was almost all entrepreneurs now you're saying yeah. it's a good mix yeah, listening yeah. i need to <laughs> i need to be positive about them <laughs> oh they're listening so you don't yeah. want to insult your friends yeah. oh yeah they're great entrepreneurs <laughs> the best <laughs> the best of the best <laughs> i'm gonna cut <laughs> to lose him. who and you are you social who's more social i think he's more social than me yeah a little, little bit more um i'm not really social but you like sales yeah you like persuading people to buy yeah and you were doing that with fitness yeah yeah who does more do you do phone sales i used to do for I a long time yeah. i don't like it i never I yeah almost never did it that's what i told you i don't think you're that social you're more intellectual. Yeah, I think so. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And you, who reads more? I do, probably. Do you read? I read, yeah. But uh, probably reads more. Who books, reads so. more intellectual stuff? I do, probably. For me, it's a lot of self-help and entrepreneurship. Yeah, me too. Who reads philosophy? I used to. Why'd you stop? No time. Oh, don't say that. Prioritize. Why? It's just for the fun of it to read philosophy. When, whereas if you, live, you read about business or self-help, you have the fun and also you can improve your life. Try to optimize. Man, I don't know. I think you, I think smart. I think becoming smarter. I'll, I'll tell. I'll, I'll leave you with this. I think we're wrapping. Yeah. Are we wrapping up? I'll leave you with this. Um, the one thing that makes people advance in life is getting smarter, actually smarter. I don't care if it's philosophy, practicing math, blah, blah, blah. Now, some people would say, no, 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 Ty. There's people who just get book smart and it doesn't help them in practical life. I don't find that to be very common. Uh, I find, yeah, how many times have you met somebody and they're a genius, actually smart, and they've gotten, they're getting smarter but they're like completely never do anything in life. I don't find that to be true. When you get to the top, whether it's business, they're all reading philosophy books. They're all smart. The biggest thing that when I can tell, I can almost guess somebody's net worth by one conversation. Highest net worth people I know, people on Forbes list, they're 10 times smarter than people, maybe not 10 times. They're twice as sharp, curious, intelligent than people making $10 million a year. It's very linear. I don't. I don't find that to be true at all. Do you think? Do you think Elon Musk is smart? Yes. Do you think Mark Zuckerberg is smart? Yes. I mean, do you think Jeff Bezos? The the what's the one differentiator? And and there's a lot of science that IQ, or at least working intelligence, is the most correlated factor in wealth creation. And the the narrative has kind of gotten you know lie like don't read. Warren Buffett said the opposite. I think you quoted him uh, about to be a millionaire. Oh. He says you only above need an IQ at one twenty five. Yeah, yeah one twenty five to be a millionaire, okay. but not to be a billionaire. Okay, <laughs> not to be. You think Warren Buffett's a dude? Warren, I was at a conference. Warren Buffett was there, and you know he has eighteen thousand people come once a year. All the smartest investors come, and you can ask a question. And there were some Chinese economists came. And I could tell this Chinese guy had practiced this question. He was going to show he was smarter than Warren Buffett. Okay, he gets up there, <clears throat> goes to the microphone, 18,000 people listening. Warren Buffett's sitting here. 
drinking Coca-Cola because he owns Coke. And the guy goes, sir, I was looking, you bought stock options in this one, and I did the math and the strike price was here and then and the duration of the bonds and he gave all these mathematical things and he was like, I think you made a mistake. And Warren Buffett goes, he's like 95, he goes, you made a mistake in your math and just like, da -da 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 -da. and this dude who had prepared for months, <laughs> Warren Buffett <laughs> shoots him down mathematically in like six seconds. So no, I think, so what I'm saying to people is do all the things you can't totally increase your IQ, okay? But you can push it up. And that's the best return. Now, does that mean you should never focus on practical learning and never just run your business? No. But if you have if you're ambitious, the number one thing that's going to change your life is to be an actual learning machine, especially if you want to compete at the higher levels. There's a big difference in my experience between people making $10 million a year and people making 500 million. It's not like, it, it, it's a thousand times different. They're almost like a different species of people. So I was like, when Mark Cuban came to my house, I remember Mark Cuban came to my house. Did you ever come to my house in Beverly Hills? No, never. I had a big house. Everybody's been to my house. Like half the people that are famous now have been to my house. And um, I remember Mark Cuban came to my house and he was the sharpest dude that's ever he know for for one thing a sign of iq is is observation skills okay i remember him walking through my house to go out to the basketball court and he's like look at the hinges on the door he's like where'd you get these hinges i mean ten thousand entrepreneurs had walked through those doors the richest of all of them was like ah, what's that he was noticeably, it was kind of like you're bench pressing. And some people are like, oh, I can bench press 200, you know, 100 kilos. And another guy's like, look how strong I am. I can do 105 kilos. And I, oh, I do 107. And then one dude walks in and puts 400 kilos on. That's the people at the top. It's not a little bit different. So what is that? That's brain power. And so... The one thing I don't agree with Andrew Tate and other people is like the preaching the message of don't read and stuff. This is a tough message. Out of the 10 wealthiest people in the world, I just read an article where Elon Musk's sister said, oh, my brother read two books a day for his entire life. Two! I, when I said I read one book a day, people, that, I got so much hate for that. I mean, I got a lot of love, but there was, and I was thinking, uh, the one message I thought nobody would hate, read more? People hate, and I'm going, okay, but I'm validated now. Wealthiest man in the world, Elon Musk, two books a day. He said book changes life. When I met Elon Musk the first time, I said, how'd you learn to do SpaceX? Since it wasn't your expertise, he said, I bought textbooks. That's what he told me. He's like, oh, I bought the books. I'm like, he got, went to Amazon, bought like physics books, hardware. He's like, I bought books, and I memorized the textbooks. Then you got the best investor of all time, Warren Buffett reads 800 pages a day. And he says, I'm old now, and he can only read 500 pages. Jeff Bezos read one book about his mentor who formed Walmart. So many times, all the pages fell out of it. Napoleon said, my secret as the greatest general is that I read all the great generals. And he's like, read, 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 read. If you, if you, Alexander the Great, he was mentored by Aristotle, which is pretty insane. Maybe the smartest person of those times. His dad hired him as a mentor from age 14 to 16. Then before Alexander the Great went to war, he sent a library ahead. So he would always have his books with him. So I don't find any evidence that this is true. So my simple message to people is read more, become a learning machine. It don't only read business. If you want to become wealthy, read other books too, because they give you if everybody, if all entrepreneurs are reading the same business book, they're all going to come up with the same ideas. But if you're reading a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of history, you start coming up with brand new ideas that nobody can see. So, so guys, okay. read. I think you have a book coming out, right? Yeah, Is there I have a link. A, we can. I have three trends. Promote three trends .com. You can just go to tylopez.com. If you want to take the personality quiz, yeah. take twelve types.com. And yeah, if you uh, just follow me on, I'll put together, maybe I'll put together for your audience a little uh, nice 
set of recommendations that I no, don't nice. have. So yeah, just DM me on Instagram at Ty Lopez. What's the name of the pod? Well, I don't know if I want to do the podcast. I was gonna say DM me the name of the podcast, but but my team who will help me might not know. Damn, they'd be like, "What does this mean?" <laughs> but just just DM me Yomi on Instagram, and I'll I'll set up an automated reply and send you a PDF. Y O M I. Thank you, Ty. Was a Thank pleasure. you. Great discussion. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> thank you guys yeah let me shoot we see each other in, yeah. in the next episode